home, put in this holder, and we are live. day there is uh, cleaning going on around me as well so I just want to make you guys aware the family they're doing their thing they're cleaning dusting doing laundry and stuff but I don't think you guys will mind that you guys have been waiting for this and I've got a ton of oil filters here uh, literally everything from I don't know do you guys want to start with you want to start with the super tech 10,000 mile versus 20,000 mile you want me to cut open this super old AC Delco that's literally rusting that's been on the shelf for probably 20 years I don't I would guess made in England um, a funny story about this though is I, I looked up this PF this PF 53 just to see where we could go with this filter and I was seeing that guys on the internet on the forums I just wanted to, to be able to share with you guys what this PF 53 is or what it can be converted to uh, a lot of guys are saying they don't even use this PF 53 uh, AC Delco filter anymore and I was reading some forums on the GM stuff and the guys were actually saying they don't prefer the GM filters for this category most guys were saying that even though these were good filters they actually converted it to they were using like the FL, the FL 400 from Ford that you can use. They were saying that it's the same thread pitch and it's the same gasket, but they liked the capacity better. They liked the fact that the FL 400 was a little bit taller and the bypass valve was in the top of it instead of in the bottom of it. So a lot of guys converted to the Ford filter instead of using this PF 53. But you guys know how it is on the specialty forums. Guys try to make things better. Um, they try to figure out what filter will convert to this in, in a different, maybe they want more filtering capability. Maybe they want a taller filter for more capacity and stuff like that. So I was watching some of the guys actually say they converted to a, I, I could have swore it was an FL 400 is what they were saying they converted this to, or was it a 910? It's either an F FL 400 or 910, but anyway, we'll start with this one. But just so you guys can see what I have here, I bought the 20,000 mile filter. Um, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I bought the 20,000 mile filter because this was a huge thing. There were some people on the internet saying that they wanted uh, to see the difference between the 20,000 mile and the 10,000 mile and I got this to fit the Panther platform you know the 4654 uh, motors as well they were saying that these are compatible for that so we could look at what the difference between that is uh, I ordered a couple Mazda filters and then I had some Mazda filters sent to me so some of you know that Mazda and Ford have been in bed forever right so if you look inside this filter it actually has the bypass valve right there on the top this is a Ford filter. It's a Purolator filter. It's designed just like the Ford stuff that we have at the dealership. The Mazda OEM filter from the dealership is the same one that the Ford dealer has at the dealership. Just different names on it. Um, some of the Honda guys were saying that they wanted to see something compatible for a Honda. And I actually found the Fram synthetic, the ultra synthetic, version of what the little Honda filter would be and then sure enough you can look inside this filter and you can see the ultra synthetic material with the caged backing so this is not just your run-of-the-mill filter this is actually a 20,000 mile rated filter uh, something to throw in there that people were asking about they were trying to they wanted me to find some filters that hadn't been mentioned before I found a lubrifiner um, that I thought you guys would be interested in looking at because nobody really brought this up asking for it So I was like, I wonder I think they'll be interested in some filters that they haven't seen before um, One person I think howdy 
one person actually brought up the EcoGuard, which I was surprised because EcoGuard is all over Amazon. And I know a lot of you use Amazon. Some of you are against it, some of you are for it. But when this box showed up and I was like, wow, the thickness of this box is like thicker than most boxes that show up in the filters, even the OM filters, this is way better. And then when I unpackaged it, I was like, these dudes are legit, man. They have the top sealed, it looks like a very, very nice like silicone type uh, anti-feedback diaphragm instead of just like a regular one. And then I'm looking down inside this thing and I was like, man, this thing is no joke. This is a good filter. I mean, I can already tell by the feel of it. This filter is really, really heavy. And it's two times the filtration built to last 10,000 miles and it's an S4610. I think this would have been like I think this was an equivalent to one of the Honda filters uh, when I was trying to cross everything over. That's why I ended up getting this. But this is a this is a nice filter. Um, somebody asked, actually asked me to pick up a bolt filter as well because they have a couple bolts and they mentioned Quicksilver. So I said, oh, I'll just go on and see if I can find a random. That's my girl. She's sweeping and mopping. When I got on here, I notified everybody that there's other things going on in the house as well. Um, so this is a filter for a boat. Looks like any standard filter, except it has way more holes on the top of it. And the bypass valve in the bottom, it's much larger. It's like two or three times the amount. And then there's like random, a GM tech sent me some of their ultra gold ultra guard gold filters which are supposed to be super high quality uh, and volkswagen volt or volts volkswagen i say it like the guys from volkswagen so i got one of the authentic filters from them and then i've got a, a lexus filter really nice sealed um made in Made in Thailand, pretty heavy filter. And then another Mitsubishi filler, uh, filter, sealed, greased O-ring on it. Made in Thailand. And then here's one that I don't know if we're going to be able to cut it open or not because I only brought my basic stuff. Yeah, I never would. Um, so that Volkswagen filter, when you, it's not going to be a shock to you guys, but as soon as I pulled this out, as soon as I pulled this Volkswagen filter out of the box, I immediately said, man, it's a man filter. It's an exact man filter. It's got the same top cap where the, the body comes in and then it wraps underneath this top, top ring and then it's crimped and then it wraps into the holes. And then when you look inside, it's got the man plastic cage inside with the same really good, like that, that glass type pleating, like the nanotechnology type pleating. This right here is a badass filter. I mean, this filter right here is no joke. Probably one of the best filters that I've ever looked at. I wish I understood the Middle Eastern writing, but I don't know what that is. I'm sorry, brother, I don't, no disrespect, I just, I don't read that stuff. And then here's another Mazda filter. Again, the same Purolator Ford one, bypass valve sitting in the top, just a better design than the other OEM filters I've seen on the market by far. Uh, filtering capability, I can, I can say most of them are pretty compatible. Right, that's why I'm like, I'm, I'm having a hard time I almost want to say man being a base filter and the quality that it is as a base filter is probably the best base filter that I've ever opened up by far because they don't even advertise the man filter as the oh my god this is like the cat's meow to filters they just say that's our base filter with that being said the quality that that base filter is I've never seen a filter to that capability or that, that quality at a base filter level. It is by far superior to any filter on the market as just a standard base filter. Oh yeah, I'll pull that right now. 
here is the Honda A03, and right on the front of it, it says, it actually says Molly Tenix, genuine Honda 15400 RTA-003 Molly Tenix filter new. And it, it feels like a heavier filter than the other filters I've opened up. The the AO2, the even the other uh, like the Denzel, um, the other Molly filter I opened up. This feels like it's a heavier filter than what I've put in my hand from Honda so far. So I'm already expecting this filter to be better than the other ones I've even opened. This is the AO3 version. Everybody's been asking about that because I've opened the other ones. Which filters did you send to me? Because I got two boxes of filters. I got a whole box of GM filters and then I got a, uh, another box of like Mopar, um, I think it was Mazda and Mitsubishi. There was a bunch of random filters in that box which were really, really good quality. And you can tell they weren't cheap. Somebody spent some money sending me all these filters. And I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. You guys don't have to do this, but doing this reduces the cost of what I put out. You guys, if, if you guys seen how much money I've spent on buying random things to re do reviews on and building testing stations, it would make you vomit. Um, I've just been trying to spend as much money as I possibly can to really build the reviews and the channel because you, you're not gonna build a subscriber base if you're being cheap about everything. Aftermarket, best filter for Ford Expedition aftermarket. Um, honestly, I would have to go with the standard filters that everybody else specifies. Wix XP, Napa Platinum, Fram Ultra Synthetic, or Fram Titanium, or the Purolator Boss. The Purolator Boss is my favorite filter so far. So I, I just like the Purolator Boss as the best one. Uh, so here's the thing, and I don't know how you guys feel about this. I was going to play with you guys and trick you a little bit and say, hey guys, you know, welcome to the channel and stuff like that. This video is being sponsored by, yeah, that's not happening. The reason I say that is because if you start expecting, or, like I had a, a company already reach out to me and it was a, they wanted to send me their top of the line scanner, which was like a $5,000 scanner. And then like a, a $1,500 scanner and then like a $500 handheld scanner. Um, I wouldn't say STP is known as one of the best. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that personally. Um, the only STP filter I've ever opened up was a basic remake of the most generic $3 Fram. Which I'm not talking trash about. Just wasn't impressed by it at all. It was actually one of the lowest grade filters that I've opened up. Oh yeah, so I did get some. Yeah, I did get your box. It's here. I'm actually going to open some of that today. And I do have one here that nobody asked for. Nobody even came close to asking for. And I found it randomly on the internet. And I was like, this is going to be super interesting to open up because nobody's even mentioned this filter. Um, and this filter was not cheap when I bought it. I don't know if you can find it cheaper or not, but this was not a... This is probably one of the most expensive filters that I've actually opened up. And it's designed and supported by European specialists. It is a, it's called an Alima filter. And I was told that this goes on like what I think you can put this on Volkswagen. It's a, a filter where it's threaded in, and I it might be some kind of top mount filter, maybe you guys know. But I saw it and I was like, you know what, I want to try to open that thing up because that looks like the beefiest filter that I have opened. The case, the case. You, you can't open the, I mean, the case is like solid, like a solid piece of steel. And then all this support and ribbing and the, this thing is massive. German quality filters. I appreciate that too, Rob, I, I really do. Um, so let's start with the old one. Let's start with the one that's like 20 years old and then look, looks, look at another one that's like close to it. We have a PF46E, a UPF48R, 
this is a Dura, Dura guard, so what would be the closest one to it on the table here? The 46E, PF66, UPF, so that's the ultra one. Let's open this one first. Let's just go ahead and crack it open now and For this being as old as it is, and even rust on the ring, that's nice. It still has plenty of spring to it. It's not all dried up. It's been I'm sitting on the shelf for a long time. Thank you. Greetings from Illinois. Oh, sorry, I get sidetracked easy. So a company asked me if they wanted to, they were going to send me three scanners. They were going to send me like this $5,000 scanner. It was like a $1,500 scanner and there was like a $500 like small uh, pocket scanner type deal where you can like easier to move around. Um, but they wanted me to exclusively use the scanners on the channel. And I said, well, that locks me into not being able to review and look at other things. And they said, well, we want us, we want to be the... the the electronic or the scan tool company that exclusively supports your channel so we want you to exclusively support us so if anything breaks or needs to be updated it's going to be free we I said well then that leaves me to the point where I can't do reviews on other scan tools and stuff like that I can't use them if I'm doing diagnostics in the future I can't do any of that stuff and I need to have that freedom especially if I don't like the way yours performs well that's something that we want to lock in with you as a deal well, no deal then. I'm not going to be controlled by somebody. I'm sorry. It's just not how I do things. Now, if you want me to give your scanner a go and I'll send it back to you, I'm more than willing to do that. But I'm not going to be locked in by somebody's contract exclusively using only your product. It doesn't work that way. My life doesn't get dictated by somebody else. So I'll pass. I'm sorry. I just, I'm not interested. So how they test efficiency is... Um, you can actually go to the individual how much longer does that washer have because I didn't how much longer does it have oh I didn't okay because I'm like I'm not I know I got it I got it they know I'm talking to you I mean family's around I'm just hearing it in the background while I'm trying to talk, and it's like distracting me. Um, so how they test the efficiency is, well, this is just by me looking at things, is I've looked at the different channels and stuff like that, and they will set up like a machine. Uh, this was oil filter testing for Fleet Guard is the one I looked at. They had a board that was set up, and they had a reservoir in the center, and then it had a pump on one side, with lines going to it, into the reservoir, and then back into the filter housing. And they purposely put a calculated amount of debris and dirt and stuff into this oil, enough that it was light, that it would float through and it would change the color and everything else. And they pumped it through the filter. And then they actually seen what was coming back out and there's a way that they can measure it by, I don't know if it's by weight or by the color of it, how it looks, what gets trapped in the filter and stuff. And there's a varying degree of different debris that's in that oil. And they actually get to see, micron-wise, what comes back. Thank you for the, the super chat. Let me see here what this says. For filters, I had a modern oil burning 2.4 liter Tiger Shock Fiat motor and a Jeep. I'd recommend 020 synthetic. It recommended 20. 020 synthetics, like what tend to be 30 synthetic, stop burning oil. Will that mess up the motor? I live in a hot climate. Probably won't. Um, you're probably fine. The only thing that I would be concerned with, uh, with taking a 0W20 and moving it to a 10W30 is the fact that uh, timing components, I don't know that motor. Um, I know that if you go to too thick of an oil, and you're trying to, to change the oil that the manufacturer specifies, you can budge a little, but when you really move outside of that box, 
the way that oil flows, the pressure that's built in a certain given time, and the way the advancement and retarding of the uh, of like the, the cam phasers and stuff like this, it, it can set check engine lights. It can cause performance issues and stuff like that. So that's the only thing that I would be concerned with. But if you've been using it now and you don't see a problem, which is that's not like really far outside of the window. I'm talking about going from like a 5W20 to a 20W50, like some guys are doing with uh, the Mustangs, the old Panther cars and stuff like that. It really starts to uh, to mess with things and create some excessive wear in certain areas and stuff, especially on cold starts when the vehicle can't move that, that oil through the motor like it would. So um, I would think that a 10W30 is maybe the max, like Sean said right here, the max of what I would go. I would have probably stepped up to a 5W20 and left it there to see if it would have what washer? Oh, it's um, it's the one I did a uh, I did a video on uh, replacing the the pumping unit in it. It's a what is this? LG. It's an LG. It's got like the digital display in the corner and stuff like that. The pumping unit went out, and I was online searching all over the place, and I ended up finding a guy that had a complete breakdown of all the problems with the pump on this thing and I was able to change the pump in an hour and a half just rip the thing apart get all the way down to the pump replace it put it in use the $26 $25 Amazon pump there was a universal pump for like many different manufacturers and had the thing back up and running like it was brand new anyhow I would have went to maybe a 5w20 or a 5w30 before I stepped up all the way to a 10w30 because you could you maybe could have achieved that at a lighter viscosity well she paused it now she paused the washer that's why you can't hear it, it was going it was i could hear it and like <laughs> as i'm trying to talk to you guys it was throbbing in my ear uh let's cut this thing open but i hope that helps i i mean if you, what you're doing works for you with going from a 0w20 to a 10w30 then i i'd say work it because i can't tell you how to run your vehicle but I personally wouldn't have jumped there. I would have went to a 520 or I would have went to a 530 before I went to a 1030. But if it works for you, do that. I just, I'm worried about on these newer, more efficient vehicles and stuff now, timing components. They start to wear out uh, when they don't get oil right away and things of this nature. All right, so George, while we're here right now, um, Excuse me for a second, guys. There's 45 of you watching, but I got to nip this in the bud now. Not that you're being disrespectful, but if you're going to talk to me about things, then talk to me about things. There's 47 people on here right now, right? So I have to answer a lot of questions. I get sidetracked very easy, and I have to keep my answers very short. Do not push me, please. Do not push me. Now, your comment about how they... So basically, you judge a filter by its looks. I would have expected a more detailed explanation. Now... I'm going to clear this up right now before we move any further. And then if you have something to say about this again, I, I will remove you. I'm, I won't put up with that. Um, I know where this will go. It will go into a, a pissing match. What I do is I rip these apart and I see the quality of them, the amount of pleats, what type of technology is put into them, how are the anti-feedback diaphragms, the type of diaphragm, is the manufacturer kind of living up to a manufacturer filter. And I found by ripping these apart, that all Ford filters are not always a purulator filter. You can get a Ford filter from the factory that comes on the engine that you first take off, which is a white or black filter, and it's more designed like a Wix filter. The bypass valve is in the top, just like Ford likes it, and then they move the holes from the side to the top. Purulator doesn't do that. Purulator builds the Ford filter to where the bypass valve is in the top, but the holes are in the side. So, do you even have a way to test these filters? Yes, guys. I mean, I've been talking about this now for, for months. The fact that I've I ordered the equipment to build a testing station, and I don't know how many times I've taken pictures of it and updated in videos and posts where I've said... I need moderators on this channel. I'm repeating myself over and over again. I'm constantly repeating myself, and this is the part that becomes annoying. I have a hydraulic tank. I have the pump. I have all of the lines and stuff like that. I have to make time to step away from all this other testing stuff so I can get to building that stuff because I don't have enough time to do it because people are requesting so much. And I'm willing to give that to them. It just puts me off. No. 
you're not I you, you haven't been on the channel long enough or spoke to me long enough to actually um, have this kind of conversation with me so when you learn more about the channel and you watch more about the videos and you see what I do every day and then you go back and look at all these oil filters and the things that I've done then let's talk but let's not do this right now in the middle of a live chat please I, I don't want to have to boot you right now but please be respectful guys we're gonna move on I, I, I don't want to deal with these guys I, I don't want to have to deal with people's mouths and stuff right now I'm not the person for it I'm not the I'm not the type of person to leave, listen to people run their yap that's not me if you wouldn't if you wouldn't act a certain way uh, to my face don't do it on here because to my face you wouldn't do that I'd put you in your place real quick and that's just how it is I don't I don't play that stuff This filter is really hard to cut open. Right, this guy's got to go. It's, goodbye, Joris. I wonder if I can, which one of you guys want to be a moderator on here uh, to help me out and get rid of these guys? I'm going to make somebody a moderator so I don't have to. William. All right, I'm going to do that because Will's always on here. Add moderator. All right, Will is now a moderator on the channel. And then... I'm going to make, because uh, I'm always seeing. Yeah, I, I get that, um, Matt. You are, and I'm going to make one leg and Honda mechanic. Come on, this thing won't let me. I just, I can't do it guys while I'm on here doing this. This thing is super hard to cut open. My God. I just, as many times as I have people on here and I answer questions for people all the time, it surprises me the same people come on and just keep asking the same questions over and over again. Uh, it just, I don't, I think it's too honestly, I think sometimes it's honestly to troll me. And I think they get a rise out of seeing me. I just, I don't deal with, I respect you as a man and I want you to respect me as a man. But when it comes to talking crap to each other and trying to put each other down or like, you know, I don't deal with all that. I'm, I'm literally the same. Anybody that, that, that you know or anybody on here that has met me in person knows that I'm the same way in real life that I am on this camera. This camera don't change me. Golly. There we go. The, the filter thickness body does matter if you're a racer. If you're somebody that's building a lot of oil pressure, you don't want the oil filter to expose or to explode. So for higher pressure, higher PSI applications, yes, it does matter. Okay, so this thing split, but normally they just pop right open, but this can is so thick on this thing. You know what this looks like? This is the, um, 
What name am I looking for? The German filter that I just, I just cut open not too long ago, this is built almost identical to it. Um, Hengst. Remember, remember when I did the man filter and the Hengst filter and I was comparing the two and I was so impressed with, with how just the base model man filter is? This has the same top to it. It has the same, look at that material right there in the edge. There's no other filter that I've seen so far that does that. The, the German Hanks filter is the only one that I've seen use that brown material in the edge and then use the case. The same diaphragm. It's got the same style diaphragm that the German Hanks does. This is kind of cool. Wow. I'm glad I actually opened this because I didn't, I didn't really, I wonder if they could have been working together at one time. It's got the same, the same type pleating where they use the case to hold everything together in a glued sealed end. This is made just like the German filter, the Hanks filter. That's kind of crazy how that, and it's got the same crimp. Remember the Hanks has that too. This is a, this is a Hanks filter. That's what this is. Because the Hanks uses the same thing where it comes down, it's got this crimped in edge right here and then it comes back out. That's kind of cool. That's really freaking cool. And the fact that this filter still looks this good all these years later, that's German quality right there. That's a, that's a German filter. So I wonder back when this filter was made, you know, it looks like it's, some of these guys are saying this filter is 15 to 20 years old. Uh, we didn't, this is the first one that we opened up, actually, so you didn't miss anything. This is the first one. Um, th I'm going to have to go back and, I wonder if any of you were on the channel back when I was opening up that man filter and the Hanks filter because they're both German filters. That's what that is right there. Identical to it. Same crimp, same rolled steel core, the same glue in the top, the same pleats where they use the case, the crimping area to help keep the the pleat centered and pushed up against the center core. And then remember when I said I was a little... Yeah, the Molly. Yeah, that was all the same time frame right there. And remember how I said um, I wasn't really impressed with how they used the filter and the glue in the top to hold everything together and then somebody jumped on the channel and said that's not what that's for. That's because when they roll that cap over, it's glue to help seal the top of the roll in the case where they actually uh, crimp in the top plate. That the case is actually what holds the filter where it's at. And it keeps it pressed up against the center core. And they use the extra thick case because this is a really thick case. Why did they ever stop doing that? Because like you cut open a lot of the GM filters now and they look like frams inside. But when you look at this, being a basic, just DuraGuard filter, this was a huge top quality filter back then. If this is the basic, just non-gold DuraGuard filter, this is probably one of the best stock filters that they probably ever had in stock. And why they would downgrade to a Fram style internal when they could have stayed with this. I don't, this is, this is nice. I saw your video on the 1.5 liter Ford Fusion coolant intrusion a few weeks ago. Thanks for that informational video. Has it helped me realize my Fusion has the same thing? Yeah, I mean most of the, the most of the Fusions with the 1.5 liter, the 1.6 liter, more of the 1.5 liter than anything between like 2016 and 2019 had that coolant intrusion issue. And the only reason that was was because they put slits in between the bore of the cylinders and it was a coolant relief passage. The newer updated design went to nothing but a pinhole on an angle. It goes from the coolant jacket up into the cylinder head and it matches up evenly with the little pinhole in the cylinder head. So that's all they had to do to get rid of that issue. So basically you're just replacing the short block. But on the 2.0 liter, 
you're actually replacing the long block. They don't have a short block available for that recall with the 2.0 liter. And then every once in a while, I would get a 1.6 liter that would have it, but it was more the 1.5 liter than anything. And every once in a while, like a 2.0 liter would be the second most common. The third would be the, the 2.0 liter or the 1.6 liter, but that wasn't a common thing other than just the 1.5. And it was like mainly between 2016 and 2019. I think there was a small right mid 2015 where they started to use that new block design so some of them you would get it too but it was mainly 16 to 19 1.5 liters the most common uh, i don't really have an opinion on the ulv fluids they're they're newer and they you cannot use any fluid in place of that it has to be that fluid which I'm sure Valvoline or somebody's already making a fluid that's compatible. What's weird is you'll see a lot of technicians say, um, yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. I would engine swap it. The Fram Ultra Filters, Ford Windsor, they're, they're really good. They're up there with the Wix XP and the Napa Platinum, the Amsoil filters, the, the filtering, the pleating, the, the ribbing that they put behind it to protect everything and keep it stout and true when it does plug up so it doesn't collapse. It's extremely nice. My favorite filter so far is the Pure Later Boss. That's... I like the Pure Later Boss filter. I'm going to see. I don't think I can pull this out without cutting my hand. Oh, no, it did. It popped right out. Ah, I did cut my hand. I knew I was going to do that. Luckily, it didn't go through enough to... A little bit of blood, but not very much. I knew I was going to do that. I thought I could grab it just right. Yeah, see, the same, uh, there was another filter I opened up recently that had that same bypass valve in it. No, that was a Hanks. It was the Hanks that has the bypass valve. And what's, what's weird about this is if you look at this GM design, that spring-loaded bypass valve, it's actually got a, it's got a crimp, or not a crimp spot, what would you call that, uh, it's uh, mushroomed out over that so that spring can't pop off of there. That Hanks that I had, was it? A, it was one recently that had the same thing. I forget the filter it was now. But it was loose. It was not attached to it. You could actually just pull it off. What I like about this is this is all built into the filter. There's no loose parts inside this can at all. This can is super freaking strong on this thing. This thing is strong, strong. This is like a... Uh, like the quality of like a race filter can. It's the strongest stock style filter. In this whole core, there's nothing loose inside it. It's all built together. Like it's, it's made to be secured as one unit where you're not taking it apart in pieces. And then it's glued to the center core right here. I mean, this, you can see there's glue right in those pleats that is hold, that's holding it to the center core. A super thick material too. Really, really, really thick material. I see it got me a little bit. Now that's a filter. That's a good filter. GM should have never changed from that filter. That that is a that is a badass filter right there. Uh, which one do we open up next? Which one do you guys want to see next now before we uh we move on? The A O three, that Honda A O three.
Amsoil is not worth the money to change every 3,000 miles. If I had to pick a, uh, an oil to change every 3,000 miles, I would pick uh, Pennzoil Platinum Ultra. And that's really stretching it because that's such a good oil. You can buy it fairly cheap now. Um, every 3,000 miles, you could, I, and I hate to say this, but you could almost use a conventional oil every 3,000 miles and be completely fine. Now, do I recommend that in some of today's cars? No. Full synthetic oil, get a real good name brand like a, like a Mobil or a Pennzoil or something like that. I wouldn't go with an AMS oil or a Redline every 3,000 miles because you're throwing money out. That oil is meant to be running those vehicles for a really long time, even though I don't agree with that. That's what they engineer them for. It's up to you on whether or not you want to spend your money doing that. I personally would not do that. I'm running the AMS oil in the Dodge right now to see what kind of cleaning it does in a three to 5,000 mile period. And it takes a long time to get that, those miles on when I'm doing other tests and driving other vehicles on the channel to get, you know, put out information for subscribers. But um, at the same time, uh, yeah, I just, I just can't see spending that kind of money on an AMS oil and changing it every 3,000 miles, not even every 5,000 miles. You gonna see? You want to see the Toyota? Toyota one. Do I have a Toyota one or Lexus Toyota? Is that what we're seeing? This thing will stop bleeding. It keeps bleeding. All right. I got the Honda. Uh, okay, Lexus Toyota. This is a nine zero nine one five. YZZD3 It's my battle, my battle wounds for the channel. Holy crap, man. Look at this. Look at the threads. One, two, three, four, five threads. This is the first filter that I've picked up that has five threads in the filter base. You can, one, two, three, four, five. I can see five right in the camera right there. I have not picked up a single filter yet that has threads from the base, from the insert of the thread all the way to the end like that. Normally it's like three, maybe you're lucky if you get four, not five. This is pretty cool. Is there six threads? One, two, three, four. I don't see six threads. One, two, three, four. Well, there's five threads. I don't see six threads. I have not seen a single filter with that yet. Wow, look how wide that is. 
Look how thick that thread base is. It's like twice the, the, the thread thickness that you would expect on some of the more basic filters, OEM filters. The Walmart filters, uh, the warm Walmart oil is phenomenal. It's good oil. It's like actually one of the top oils. That right there is freaking awesome, man. That's a good filter base. That's an excellent filter base. And this looks like this looks like some kind of black silicone anti-feedback. This don't feel like a regular rubber, but if it's a regular ru rubber, it's a really, really, really good, high-quality regular rubber. This is just amazing, man. They've got their own type of design leaf spring with bypass valve in it. This looks, actually looks pretty damn cool. It's nice. It's sufficient. It feels pretty strong. Look at that filter quality. A lot of pleats in this thing. A lot. Very strong filter. And it's got this really high quality like super hard super strong ring that's glued into the end of it wow that's a this is a nice filter it's a really nice filter a lot of pleating a lot of thick pleats too this is no joke, a really good high quality filter. Super thick too. You can tell this is going to filter the hell out of some oil. The can, the can is really strong. It's actually thicker than most OEM ones. I gotta give it to him on that one, man. That's that's a knock out of the park filter right there. All all of the filters that I've opened up from Thailand and Japan, like made in Taiwan, made in Thailand, made it made in Japan, they've all been like really, really, really good quality. What's the next one we're opening up? What do you guys want to see next? Non-direct injection intervals, 2.5 will go further. Yeah, Amazon Oil is getting some great reviews right now. Yeah, this is a, uh, one is a purebred lab. He's only about 10 and a half, 11 months old. He's like 80 pounds, 80 some pounds. And then the other one is like some kind of husky lab, something mixed. And she's about, I think, 55, 60 pounds or something like that. OEM Honda was disappointing. Do you want to see the OEM Honda A03? Because I can do that right now. I'll do the, let's do that one right now. Can I have that garbage can? Let me put the garbage can over here so I can throw this stuff as way as, as I'm doing it. 
I thought about taking some of these and then rounding off the edges. Somebody gave this I gave me this idea, rounding off the edges and then making a handle for it and clearing them and making them like coffee drinking cups or you know like uh, some uh, you want some like a Manhattan or something like that. Put a big ice cube in it and grab your your oil filter cup and just sip on it while you're watching a movie or out on the deck or on the boat or something like that. Let's open the AO3. This is the 15400 RTA003. Really nice looking filter so far. Big oil inlet holes. It's greased all the way around. There's grease on it after pulling the packaging off. You know, I'm going to say it one more time. This filter here, GM should have never got rid of. That's a, that's a great filter. And it takes a lot to cut through this filter. All right, I see. If, I will see you Friday on the oil, the oil change and inspection, there, Bob. Wow, it took a little bit to get through that. Okay, um, <laughs> not what I expected. Looks like a nice silicone drain back valve. It's not like a regular rubber, it's like really soft and it's really slick. Uh, thread count. One. Let me see here. One, two, three, four. And it looks like the start of a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's five. It's like, it almost looks like four and a half to five thread rings in here. Come on, focus. So this, this is another one where it's got a really deep thread. It's like the, all the, the OEM Thailand Japan, China made oil filters are just phenomenal. And it says right on this, just so you guys know, on the Toyota one that I took apart, it says Denso. It says right on it. So Denso is the one that makes that filter. This one, it's got a thick can. That's why it was so hard to cut through it. The can is really thick on this AO3 compared to the other ones, it seems like it's almost a little bit thicker. That's a thick can, for sure. Um, ooh. A lot of pleats, a lot of pleats in this filter. I would say the quality is the best Honda one that I've opened up so far in the Honda line. Um, the cardboard end, whatever type of mixture end this is, is like two or three times the thickness that you would normally see in one of the Hondas. It's really stout. It's very, very, very strong. 
and you can even see the thickness of the material but I'm kind of sad I'm a little disappointed at the same time to be honest with you I wasn't expecting cardboard I wasn't expecting anything like this I was expecting like a metal cap or something to that extent I'm not saying it's not sufficient don't get me wrong but what I am saying is I didn't expect this because so many people for so long are like, oh, wait till you get an AO3 in your hand. Wait till you get an AO3 in your hand. Well, I have one. And it looks like a nice filter, but it just looks like a thicker version of the Fram. This is much stronger by far. This looks like this could be probably a 10,000 mile filter. With the thickness of these end caps and their design, but I'm not wowed by this. I'm not impressed by this. What I'm impressed with is this here. The end cap on this thing is really strong. It's really nice. And overall, this is a huge upgrade to the other two filters I took apart. But would I say this is the best filter for the Hondas that I've opened up? No, I wouldn't. The Mali and the Denso were much better than this filter uh, in comparison. I didn't really struggle that much to break this apart. It's definitely harder to break this apart than it was the other ones I did. I would say this is a sufficient 5,000 mile filter for sure. If you were going to change it by 5,000 miles. But I wasn't expecting this honestly. I was expecting something different. Just based on what you guys were saying. This is a very good quality filter. Even this part, I would say, is pretty good quality, but it wasn't what I was expecting. A lot of cardboard here, which I'm not an engineer. I don't design this stuff, so I don't I don't get to say what is what is uh, what should and shouldn't be made a certain way. I'm not the one that designs it. But what I can do is look at it and give my opinion based on what I've seen in the field, and my opinion is. I would still pick a Denso or a Molly over this. Like a regular Molly. Even though the label on this, didn't the label on this one say? The label on this one says genuine Honda parts, 15400 RTAs 003, oil, Molly 10X, filter, new. I don't know. I just, uh, I'm not very impressed with that one. It was better than the other ones for sure. But it was not better than the Molly and the Denso. So, we'll leave that there. We'll move on to the next one. What's the next one? Are we doing a, a Mazda filter or you want to see that EcoGuard? The one that, I, that nobody really asked for. I think one person asked for it and I, I find that it's actually a really, really nice filter. I used to work at Mazda Subaru dealership. I'm glad you opened those in your other videos. Yeah. Mazda? Okay. The Mazda is just another Ford filter. Or, I can't even say that because it's not even a Ford filter. You too, thank you. Um, I can't call a Mazda or a Ford filter a Ford filter to be honest with you because it's a, it's a pure later filter. Okay. This is actually almost like it's pre-lubed. The quality of this, this O-ring, it already has a sheen to it, like it's real greasy-like. But when you try to wipe it off, it doesn't wipe off. It's the part of the material. It's like a silicone hybrid rubber O-ring. I don't know if that's true or not, or if that's just how it's made, but you can almost see the sheen to it, and it's really slick. Like if you didn't grease this, it would still go on and come off perfectly fine. We're doing them. We're doing a motocraft right now, because that, that's exactly what this is. This is a motocraft. 
I've done Motorcraft in my previous videos, but that's this filter is just a rebranded Mazda. And Motorcraft is just a rebranded Purelator. So Purelator makes Motorcraft filters for them, and then Wix makes the filters on the Ford engines from the factory. But they make them because they're uh, they're both the same design. They just change the tweaks of the hole on the bypass. I'll show you right now when I open this up what the difference between the Wix Ford uh, and the Wix or the Purelator Ford is. I can show you there right now. The AO3. The AO3. It, I did say it was a it was a good quality filter. I just I'm not impressed with it. I thought based on what everybody was saying, you got to get an AO3. You got to get an AO3. There was going to be like some wow. That's a really. I didn't feel that. Um. I see three full rings and then the start of a fourth, so not quite four on the threads. It's a decent heavy duty end cap. I like these Ford style uh, drain back valves because the drain back that are the, let me, let me just point this out this way. The bypass holes in the top right here in the centerpiece right here this part this will stop it from closing completely and still standard leaf spring nothing too crazy can it's thin it's not super thin but it is thin it's not made for a race car um, the the drain back valves really impressed me because it's like this silicone type material that's super strong super slick and the design this bypass valve if you took a pair of pliers and grabbed this you could literally pull this bypass valve right out of the top of it with a little pretty decent strength effort and what ends up happening is oil comes through here and what if these pleats ever there's a ton of pleats in the motorcraft filters the Mazda and Motocraft filters, they're just pleated like you would not believe. Lots of pleats, lots of filtering. Uh, and it's really, really, really good quality material. Probably some of the best standard filters I've ever put in my hand uh, are the OEM Mazda, uh, Toyota, Mopar, Ford filters are like some of the top of the line filters I've ever touched when it comes to OEM filtering capability. This is a nice filter. It's a high quality filter. This is a filter that I wouldn't hesitate to run 10,000 miles if that was something that I did, but I don't do that. I don't believe in running a vehicle more than 5,000 miles. I don't like doing it more than 3,000 miles. But what the difference between the Wix design and Yeah, well, we've got some, we'll probably have some more here. Let me see. I saw the Lube Refiner PH47. That's a male truck filter. Lube Refiner. Oh, yeah, this here. If you guys want to open that next, we'll open that next. But the difference between the Wix and the Pure Later... All this stuff ends up looking the same, like it's almost the same dimension, same design, same everything. But when you look, Wix puts these bypass holes right here on the side up top and the bypass valve sits in the top of it. You could just grab it and pull it out and then put it back in and then the casing is put around it with a spring, right? Well, the way Purelator designs these is they press the bypass valve into the top of this so it can't just come out of there. It's pressed in. Yeah, this 
The pleating in this thing is strong, very, very strong. Which one do you want to open up next? Did we say we're going to do the lubrifiner next? Let's just do the lubrifiner. It's set up with that double hole stuff where it's got the hole on the top and the hole in the side, like on an angle. These have a lot of threads on them. One, two, three, four, five, six full threads. I don't know. It looks like five and a half, like full, five full threads, but then there's a start of another one. So a lot of threads in this one. It's got a heavy base to it, a lot of inlet holes, a lot of threads to it. I'm really impressed with this part. This part's really nice. It looks like it's got some kind of Fram style drop in. I know, I don't know, I, I know some of you guys have said that's not Fram, but this is the type of stuff Fram does where they put these really big wide open ones. Some people have said it's Champion, I don't know exactly. Um, this doesn't look like that low of a quality filter, but at the same time, it uses some kind of fiber type end. It's not cardboard. It's like a cloth type material, almost like that nanotechnology pleating. But it, it also, it's pretty strong. I'm trying to rip this stuff off there and it won't. It's actually strong. Mm. That's some strong material though. It's a pretty low quality filter overall, but it's a strong, strong filter. It's got a decent core to it. It's pretty strong. It took me everything just to break it. Uh, it's not a not an expensive filter at all. It's impressive. It for sure is impressive. There's a lot of pleats here. There's a lot of filtering here, but it's cheaply made. It's strongly cheaply made, though. I can say that. Um, overall, would I buy this filter? No, I probably would not buy this filter. The can seems to be super thin compared to the other ones. I mean, look how easy it is for me to just, I'm putting, I'm literally putting my finger mark straight through the can. 
I've left there's a couple nuggets where I've, I've where I've gripped it just from where I was. I don't know if you can see the indentation right there in the light, kind of glaring off of it, just where I grabbed it and literally put finger marks in it. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not too impressed with that can, but it seems like it's a strong can. Champ. Yeah, I thought somebody told me this was a champ type filter when you see those those big double holes like that. It seems like a strong filter. For sure. But it's not a it's not a very good quality filter at all. You guys want to do the Eco Guard or or do you want to do Mitsubishi or Nissan? You want to do the Nissan one? I don't think we've done a Nissan. We could do the Nissan and the Volkswagen. The Volkswagen one looks like a Molly. Mitsubishi. Okay. This is the Denzel, made in Thailand. It's it's got a greased O-ring on the end of it. Looks like it's got some kind of blue, really cool looking anti-feedback diaphragm. <laughs> Pretty cool actually. I love seeing things that are a little bit different. It does look like a really nice can. This can looks very, very nice. Uh-oh, started to bite too much. I was getting ahead. getting too excited here. Come on. You know what I'll do? I'll pull the old ring out of it. It'll sit more flush. Hey babe, can you get me a like a pair of scissors or something like that? If I could take this old ring out or a knife. Thanks, dear. It's fine. I'm not gonna damage it. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Let me see. Let me see if you guys can see some of that too. Look how many threads are in there. You can see the top one. Come on if it'll freaking zoom in. One, two, three, four, at least five threads is what I'm, what I'm maybe I'm seeing things. One, Two, three, four, five. I got five threads in here. That's a good filter in. Again, most of these filters, the standard filters, they have three threads. You're lucky if you get four. That's nice. That's cool. Actually, I just I just think it's cool. It's like a silicone, really nice, high-end, very slick, very, very strong. 
I just like things that are different. Now, we go back to that glued media right there. It looks like very good high quality filtering media. Not a very lot of it. I mean, it's just, it's more wide and thick than anything. But it uses that plastic ring glue stuff right there at the end. And then the core actually slides right out of it. Very basic filter, strong filter. Um, they're nice filters though. It's really hard to rip whatever this material is that they put on the end of this here. F and Tony, thank you. I appreciate that. Why is in the new Mustang V8 you cannot oil the ring seal? Does that apply to the F-150 V8 as well? Um, the reason they don't want you to oil them is because of the vibration. That Coyote motor... I can't only say so much. I can't say a lot because I'll, I don't, I need to watch what I say on this. They don't like me, um, they don't like me talking about this particular topic when it comes to their V8 and their, and their performance car, like the GT350, um, the Mach 1, they don't like me talking about those cars. There's a lot of vibration that comes from that motor. And they want you to stop oiling that o-ring because that tension between the o-ring and the block itself will actually help hold it and that's why on the gt350s it's just basically a bored out five liter coyote with a different crank and a different set of pistons in it i think they that's why they call it the voodoo engine and there's a lot of vibration in, that comes from that motor and they're seeing the filters actually back off of it due to all the vibration so that's why they put a torque spec on it and they said stop oiling the o-ring it will it'll be fine that extra tension is what helps hold that filter on the block now as for the f-150 i didn't see anything put out for that because i think it's programmed a little bit different uh, this is really hard to break this filter my god mm. Whatever this material is that they put on here, it's very, very, very strong on the Subaru, or is it Subaru filter? No, Mitsubishi, right? What did I even open up, guys? I'm losing my mind here. Yeah, Mitsubishi. Losing my mind here. Talking about two different, too many different things at one time. Oh, there's the emblem right there on the side. Genuine parts, Mitsubishi Motors, and it's made in Thailand again. It's got that same, looks like really good high quality leaf spring with the spring loaded bypass valve in the bottom of it. Can can is not super strong. Like if you look at this can, and then you look at this can, they're completely different. And I know this one is it's smaller, so it's going to have a little bit more like leverage against it. But it is uh, it's longer, so it takes away from that. And it's a stronger can than this can. This can seems like it's thinner, but it is wider, so that's going to affect it as well. Overall. I think it's a phenomenal filter. I really like this filter. I like what they've done with this glue, whatever this material is. It's super strong, and it really helps keep these things together. Whatever they did, it works. I'm gonna keep this. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna find something. That, I like that. I like things that look just a little bit different than other filters. Uh, let's open this filter here. Let's open this Nissan filter. And just so you guys can see what Nissan filter this is.
did you send it to my personal email or did you send it to the fordbossme at gmail.com because I still have not even finished setting that up on my new computer I got. It's like I try to commit to something and then so many other things pop up when people like one other thing's done and I try to like make everybody happy and I sometimes have a hard time finishing my original task. I appreciate the super chat by the way and I will definitely look at my email to make sure whatever it was that you ask gets taken care of. I do apologize that I may have not have seen it. What's going on, AJ? Bro, this filter is like, it's tough. Or it feels like it is, I don't know. This, it looks like a little Honda filter. I bet you the quality of this one's gonna be better than the Honda one, I don't know. I could be wrong. It, it is already, I can tell. Looks like a nice silicone drain back valve. It's not like the, the thick rubber stuff. It's the more softer, durable silicone drain back valve. Now the threads that it has, one, two, three, maybe four, maybe close to four. Try to focus. Now it doesn't want to focus. Should I give it a backing? Didn't somebody say one time you gotta put like your hand behind it or something? It's not my turn. My turn is next weekend. I actually had to work twice this month because of the amount of days, and I hate it. I hate having to work on the weekends. You like you work on a Saturday and it's pointless because people are coming in for oil changes and basic services, and I get paid flat rate. So. It's like, why even come in on a Saturday for flat rate work when you're not an hourly tech? It's a waste of time because people aren't coming in for that stuff. It's, it's really a waste of time to have a flat rate tech come in on the weekend at any dealership unless you are, unless you're an hourly tech. You're wasting your time, literally. On a good day, you might be able to clock five, four or five hours. And that's because people don't want to wait. They want to be out doing stuff on the weekend with their families, with their events and stuff that they go to. They come in for quick oil changes and services, and they, then they want to go. Anyway, that'll get me on my, my soapbox. So this is what we're looking at here. Decent can, not super thin. And that's... You know, we tried talking to our dealership too, like on Saturdays. Schedule people for during the week, if you can, for maintenance stuff on a Saturday. Then that would be worth it for the master tax to come in. But if you're not going to schedule maintenance stuff on Saturdays and it's going to be warranty type work or, or UCIs, then what's the point of even coming in? You're going to have to wait two or three days for sales to get off their ass and approve anything anyway. So it's like pointless. Unless you're doing maintenance work on a weekend... It ain't worth going in. The filtering of this Mazda filter. You know, every one of these Mazda filters that I open up, I'm concerned with because it seems like they just pack the hell out of the ends of this with glue. And then it comes out onto the filtering pleats. And it actually starts to probably restrict some of the filtering capability of it, even though it's minute. Every, or not Mazda, uh, Nissan. Every one of these Nissan filters are like this. They just dump glue, so this glob it into the ends of this. You see right here where my finger's at? And a lot of it spills out into the filter and it clogs part of the bottom of the filter. Now, is it a good quality filter? It's a great quality filter. It looks like it's like they, they done, they've done good here. But what I don't like is how it's nice and uniform and there's a lot of pleats, a lot of filter, and then you get to the other side and it's just like almost globbed and wide open. It's like the uniformity is just not there. But overall, overall, I think it's a good filter. I just don't like how they do this crap here on the end with the glue. Where they really, they fill it up past the can and then it gets into the filter media. And it doesn't allow it to filter like you would expect. I mean, it, if, I, if I was nitpicking, that would be something that I nitpick about. But overall, I like it. I like their drain back valve. I like how much filtering 
the, the amount of media that's in here. I like that. I think I like the fact that it's a, a nice steel end and top. And it's just your standard bypass valve in the bottom. So there's no reason to go any further with this. Good filter. I think it's a great filter. That, that's for sure. But I don't like the whole glue thing that they do. What do you want to open next? I got like the Duragold stuff. The Fram. Uh, I think this is the equivalent of what the Honda like AO1, AO2, AO3 is. But it's Fram Ultra Synthetics version. And then... What's this? EcoGuard, the equivalent of like the 910 or the 500. It's a heavy filter. Really heavy filter. Fram. Let's do the Fram. Really nice rubber O-ring thick. It's not like some of the thin ones. It's got a nice slick finish to it some of them are kind of grabby and they like they all it almost feels like it almost feels like it wouldn't spin on very easy like it would try to fight you where this these some of these rubber ones that are not like the silicone type somehow they build it into where these are super slick they don't need a bunch of oil and stuff on them you can almost spin it's like it's self-lubricated I have two of the SuperTech filters right here. If that's what you want me to open next, I will. I'll do that next. Uh, let's look at the amount of threads. One, two, three, four. Actually, the frame has four threads in it, so it's not the typical three threads. So that's good. For a little filter like this, for frame to get four threads out of it, that's pretty impressive. Uh-oh, Brandon with the Monster Super Chat. Holy moly, brother, thank you. Wow, you didn't have to do that. I appreciate that. That does It does help buy this stuff and take care of this stuff. I appreciate that. I really do. Everybody that donates, no matter what, I appreciate that. And it's really, you know, doing this and experiencing everything with you guys and, and pushing myself to challenge myself to see what I can actually handle in life this is uh, eye-opening to me to what all these creators go through that work a full-time job and still do this so much respect to them and i really appreciate that thank you so massive holes i mean it, how do you how do you beat that look at the amount of holes that are in this thing and how large they are for flow I have not seen a filter with that many holes that large like that. That is absolutely crazy. This, the amount of, in comparison to another small filter like it, it's like three to four times the size. Massive, massive flow with this thing. I mean, that's, ah, yeah, how do you beat that? Really nice anti-feedback diaphragm. It's very slick, very nice silicone type material. Very strong. A lot of spring back to it. Like some of the other ones are kind of lazy. This one's not a this is not a silicone type that's lazy. It actually starts to spring back immediately. So I like this. This is a very, very nice anti-feedback diaphragm. And then when we open the core up, this is the part that impresses me. They don't just put a bypass valve in the bottom, they put an extra gasket in the bottom of the bypass valve that seals up against the bypass valve. So it's not just some standard bypass valve. And they're not, it's not a, a leaf spring that's a more flat design, more lazy. It's actually got some more energy to it. It's, it's much larger. And then if you look at the Fram type designs, it's weird because it'll curl up and then it has these ripples in the end of it, almost as if like they're trying to strengthen the type of metal. So as it, it's, I don't, the ridges in the end on all the corners actually add to the strength of the leaf spring. You know, it's like taking a piece of metal and bending it and then bend or bending it multiple times and then 
trying to get the same flex out of it. It just doesn't work anymore. If you put a bunch of bends in a piece of metal and then lay it flat and try to put an object on top of it, it actually holds it up better than if something was just like a single bend or a couple bends. So the more ridges you have in it, I don't know, I don't know if it would be proper for me to say it kind of strengthens it in certain areas because it has to push against itself. But they do this type of, it's like this ridging and curling in the corners on these higher end filters with these leaf springs. And they set up higher. And then there's this, which I don't think we're going to be able to, to rip this open. But you can, I don't know if you can see in this, if you look in the holes, if you can see, there's metal pleating inside there. And it's super strong. Like, it's, it would be almost impossible to rip these pleats out of here without a pair of pliers. You're not going to do it. The way they wrap the metal top cap, and it comes down so far, and it really grabs the filter, and then the bottom as well, and then the way they take the glue and they fill up almost the entire end caps of these things so they can't go anywhere, and then they add the extra seal on the bottom up against the leaf spring, and then they add that metal mesh behind this. Let me see if I can cut a piece. Trying to cut enough of it waste away so I can show you guys the metal. It's like that fiber technology stuff. It's not regular like material. It's actually like fiberglass type material. So I'm not trying to like really rough it up too much. I don't want to breed this stuff. Now you can see the metal that they run behind it right there. There you go. There's a good shot. Where's it at? Right there. There's that metal pleating or that reinforcement they put behind it. And they run it all the way around the filter. It's a 20,000 mile rated filter. That's a, that's a badass filter. The can, it's not super, super strong. Oh, I agree with you. 100% agree with you. The Purilators do have the upgraded, or the, the better type design. Mopar SRT filter? Yes, I will, actually. I know you, you asked for that a long time ago. There was a couple people that asked for the Mopar, so let me do the Mopar first, please. Uh, some people have been asking about the Mopar one. Here's the Mopar SRT filter. This <laughs> this thing is this thing is massive. And it's super heavy. I did not do the Mariner filter yet. It's like, are you talking about this filter here, the quick, the Quicksilver? Which filter are we talking about? So what we'll do is we'll do the Super Tech next, and then we'll do the Mariner. Because somebody else already asked about the Super Tech, but I pushed the Super Tech off this time because. Um, I know people have been asking about this for a while. Uh, the newer design, like on the Ford stuff, where... Yeah. 
the type of media, it's thicker, it filters more, they add more pleats to the filter, the bypass valve is moved to a different location in some of them. Some of them have a, a better rated spring design, least spring design. Just overall, as times have changed, some of the things have gotten different, but there's a lot of manufacturers uh, that have left things the same for a long time because they just work. Purolator seems to have a really, really, really good design when it comes to that stuff. Wix does too, but I really like Purolator's filters. Oh, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Dude, this filter is like, it's so hard to open this thing. There we go. There we go. No, it's it's so large around. Yeah, you're right. I do if taking the gasket off would make it easier. I like leaving the gasket on on the ones that are lubricated that have like a little bit of oil. Like this one, how it looks like it's got a little bit of oil on it. Like it comes pre-lubed a little bit. Because it helps me turn, but let's see how many threads. Uh oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I can see six damn threads in this thing. And it's like twice as thick as your regular filter or your, uh, your base plate. When it comes to like the thread area, there's a lot of threads in this. You can see that bottom one where it starts and then two, three, four, five, and then the top where it ends is six. Like right in the center. See right over in this area right here, it ends. Yes, the Pure Later, the FLA 20 and the Pure Later 1 are the same filter. Except the bypass valve, I think, is in different locations. If you get the Motocraft FLA 20, it's got a better bypass valve design. Love you. I'll see you later. I'll get done with this and then me and her go get busy. I got a cartridge style filter here. I think it's this one right here. Somebody told me this is for a... Somebody said this is for a Volkswagen or something. Maybe, like I said earlier, I don't know if you guys know, but it's like a self-contained unit where it's got the actual mounting stud, the, the cage, the spacer plate, the spring. This thing is massive. It's like a giant chunk of steel. I've never seen a filter like that before. Oh, wow. Really nice anti-feedback diaphragm. Super strong, too. It's got a triple ridge section to it, or it's got an outer ring, and then like a second... Look at that filter. Holy moly. That bypass, or the anti-feedback diaphragm is huge. It's super strong. Talk about filtering capability. <laughs> that blows away most filters that I've seen. Even the, the standard Ford ones. But a lot of people say they're all made by the same people anyway. Like, look at Ford's... OEM stuff from the factory and then look at Ford's filters at the dealership gather the same type of design but one is a Wix and one is a pure litter but they're designed the same way they just move the holes to a different spot and um, you think about it they're all owned by the same people man was it Man and Hamill they own them all and then look at man's base filter, which is better than most of Pure Laters and, and any of Wix's filters. 
So the 500s would go on specific vehicles in tight areas. The 820s where they're more loose and you have the, the ability to put on an 820 where there's more room, it's actually better to run an 820 versus a 500. More capacity, more filtering capability, uh, actually in the sense of keeping the oil cooler and cleaner as well. That is a super nice filter, guys. That SRT filter, no wonder why. And it looks like it's, it almost looks like it's a blended media. It's not like a regular cheap. It looks like it's some kind of like blended type media where it's just not like regular paper. It's got like a red tint to it and it's got, looks like fine red hairs inside it. If you look in like the filtering media where it rips, you can see like little fine red hairs in it. That's a strong filter. That's a super strong filter. A lot of glue in this end cap too, holding these pleats all the way to where the past where the pleats start. Fram racing, yeah, I did that in a previous video. The Fram racing race filter was the strongest canned filter. The best bypass, it, the the bypass valve design on the Fram racing uses the same technology as the titanium and the ultra synthetic as well, and it has a bigger, beefier bypass valve with an extra filter screen on the bottom of the bypass valve so the fram racing filter in the racing category was the best racing filter that i actually opened up it had the strongest can it had the best type of bypass valve a lot of filtering capability so that srt filter is knocked out of the park strong strong can really strong can it's like two or three times the thickness of a standard filter it's very, very strong. Very nice, wide design. I just can't get over how strong this, the, the, how well this filter is put together. And then, not only does it have a spring on the bypass valve, it's got a, a part of a curl that comes over the top of the bypass valve What's, it's all right and it's got a curl that goes over the top of the bypass valve and most of the bypass valves whenever you push on them like this here they're like some kind of hard plastic or metal material this is not this is a rubber type material you could actually some kind of really strong rubber type material so they really want this thing to seal properly I like this filter. He's not at the door yet. Is he ready to come in? Yeah. Let me see if I can save all these uh, these little diaphragms and make something out of them. It's got a huge spring in the bottom of that SRT filter. Really big spring like the, a lot of the wicks do. This one. 
All right. Do we want... I like the Pure Later Boss. Amsoil versus Fram Ultra versus Pure Later. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> You're going to pay a little bit more for the Amsoil one. I honestly don't believe it's better for 6,000 miles. So that would be a toss-up between the Pure Later Boss and the Fram Ultra or the Fram Titanium. I've seen them all on sale for between like uh, like seven fifty to like ten dollars. I can't pick between a Fram and a Pure Later Boss, honestly. Uh, it all depends on what you want. A Pure Later Boss uses a fiberglass type meshing behind it to support it, where a Fram Ultra uses a metal screen so it doesn't collapse the pure later boss actually ties in like the the fiberglass screen type material that's behind it to support the pleating into the glue and stuff top and bottom i feel like they could probably fit more filters into a pure later boss like more pleats so it would probably filter just a, a little bit better that's a tough one because I found I found these Fram Ultras for all as low as like six dollars, six fifty. That last big Fram Ultra, no, I don't know if I did if I used it on this video or if it, one of my last videos where I was actually comparing. One I cut open, I found for eleven bucks for my truck, just to show you guys what it looked like. The second one that I cut open, I found it for like seven dollars. You can't beat that. I would have chose a Fram Ultra over a Pure Later Boss any day. So you would have to go between. You'll have to go between Pure Later Boss and Fram Ultra and actually weigh out the price. That's that's how I would figure it out. For 6,000 miles, that's that's how I would do it. Whichever one's cheaper is the one I would go with because they're really good filters. All right, so here's the SuperTech 20,000 mile filter, the blue one here. This is the SuperTech 20,000 mile filter. And then there's a SuperTech 10,000 mile filter. A white one. Let's open the 10,000 mile one first. I paid three dollars for this one or three dollars and fifty cents for this one and then for this one I paid five dollars and fifty cents for the um, twenty thousand mile one Looks like we have Fram in the house, Fram in the house, Fram in the house. And all Fram wants to do is make you bounce. That's a Fram filter. The can is super thin. It's adequate, but I'm already starting to feel my I'm already starting to feel my fingers push into it. Yeah, you pretty much got a Fram filter with the 10,000 mile one. Didn't we just do Mazda? I think we just did Mazda. I got one more I can do, but we just did a Mazda. It was Mazda is uh, Mazda and Ford have the best OEM designed 
middle grade filter on the market. Yeah, so uh, Pure Later Boss, yeah. It's, well, the Pure Later Boss is my favorite one. So this, there's your 10,000 mile filter right there. Whoa! Hello, hello, Joseph. Thank you for the super chat. That is amazing. I appreciate that. So, now that's done. All the laundry is done. There will be no more noise in the background from that. Just the kiddo and the dogs. You want to come say hi? You say hi to everybody out there? Guys, this is my daughter, Jenna. Jenna, this is the YouTube land. Hello. Okay, go play. <laughs> I got a. It is a. It's an LG. Um. So they. <laughs> hey, knock it off. It's enough. Go lay down. Hey, go. Go. At lab, he's 11 months old, and he just discovered like a month and a half ago that barking is going to get people's attention. So he thinks that just barking about anything is okay. He'll bark at the door. He'll bark at his food bowl. He'll bark at your leg. He'll bark at... He'll bark at 6 o'clock in the morning when he doesn't even want anything. He'll just right up on you, boom, paw right on the head or right on the arm, and he'll bark at the same time this morning, and that's how he woke me up. He was laying right by my head, and he just pawed me right in the center of my chest. Get off! And I was like, oh, dude, chill, man. Relax, buddy. So not, not very impressed with uh, the 10,000-mile SuperTech at all, but I have a feeling... The 20,000 mile is going to be much, much better. So let's see. Uh, let's look at the threads on the 10,000 mile SuperTech. One, two, three, four. So actually good thread design. Um, nice thick O-ring on it. Nice heavy end cap. So the 10,000 mile one, I mean, I would probably choose it for like a 3,000 mile oil change. I would not run a SuperTech 10,000 mile filter 5,000 miles or more. I would not do that. Somewhere around 3,000 miles is probably adequate, but it's just another cheap Fram design is what it is. This is the 20,000 mile rated one. Cost $5.50. What did you say? Ultra Platinum 5W30 or 5W40. Alright, is that answering somebody's question? Yeah, I mean, that's why I tell people, like, with the orange can filter, you're getting what you pay for. Remember that. But that's with... So I'm running Amsoil Signature right now, and I do have to say that Amsoil Signature, compared to any of the oils that I've used so far has made the Dodge quiet, but I cannot say that it's made the Dodge quiet more than the Pennzoil Platinum has. Uh, the the Pennzoil Platinum Ultra has made that Dodge probably the quietest so far out of any of the oils. It's really, it does a really, really good job lubricating. So I'm kind of at a crossroad. Do I think that the Amsoil could potentially have made it quieter? Yeah, maybe a little bit but not to justify the cost of a $75 oil change. No. When I can buy the Pennzoil Platinum Ultra for $27 and get almost the same um, performance out of it, you know, I'm not saying it's to the same spec because Amsoil, you know, obviously is engineered uh, better. This, it says it's got like 75% more chemical additive protection package over any other standard oil. Um, but my choice is Pennzoil Platinum Ultra because the kitty, the kitty, one of them's in there 
laying down on the, the sofa right, or on the chair right now. And the other one is probably hiding behind that couch sleeping. And then the other one's probably under the bed sleeping. No, one's right here eating. If you listen, you can almost hear. You can hear crunching on the other side of the wall right here. That she's over here eating. Or he is. No, it's the girl. She's over here eating. Come here, baby. Come here. Sorry, guys. Hello. There's one. She's a lover. As soon as she, if anybody starts loving on her, she wants to kiss them and. Hi, Senorito. Yeah, I mean, I've done Toyota a couple different times. Uh, here was one of them. Right here. It's a Denzel filter. Very good, very high quality. It was very, very nice filter. The Toyota filters are pretty nice overall. You know, Toyota Dodge, um, Mazda, any of the Mopar filters, the Motocraft filters. Pretty good quality filters. I probably would run them after all this is done. I'm, I'm going to go back to an OEM filter. I won't, on my vehicles, after all the testing and craziness is done, I will go back to just a standard Ford filter. So here's their 20,000 mile filter. I'm not sure what that, what does that can royal number one mean? So a little bit of an upgraded bypass valve on the 20,000 mile filter, very nice, very slick. It's like, it almost looks like some type of silicone design, but it's more of a dry type. It's not like so shiny, and, but it looks good though. It does look good. And the 20,000 mile super tech filter. I, I've never, and I will never go more than, uh, I do all mine before 3,000. Can Royal is a oil, Canadian oil company, good synthetic oil. They make, oh, maybe I'll check it out. I worked, love to see some vlogs of a 2.5 liter NA Escape. That's the best uh, four-cylinder that Ford has made in the last 
10, 15 years. That 2.5 liter naturally aspirated motor never comes in with the issues at all. Never. So the 20,000 mile rated SuperTech, big, beefy thread design, huge. One, two, three, four, five threads in that 20,000 mile rated filter. Holy crap, man, thank you. I appreciate that, it's crazy. Chris, with the huge super chat, my God. So if you look inside here, that is probably the beefiest design that we've seen so far thread-wise. That is the most supported, heaviest duty design out of all the threads that we've seen so far. Look how wide and thick that whole entire base is. And it's supported by the top of this housing right here. Like say anything was to happen or something like that. Say if something was to go sideways. That is crazy. What, it, what did you guys say that design was where it's got like the filters here, but then it, or the oil inlet holes, but then also on the side? Champion, right? Champion design? Champion's the only one I don't keep up with. I think that was a champion design you guys were saying. That is huge. And that oil, that supporting the, the, the mounting spot, it's, it's massive on this thing. Look at the amount of pleats inside this thing. That is crazy. I would have to say, <laughs> and, and just forgive me, some of you are not going to like this. I know when somebody goes back and watches this video here in a couple days or a week or two months from now. This filter. I can't. I don't even know if I can say it. <laughs> This filter is ungodly for the price that it is. $5.49. This is a hell of a filter for $5.49. This is absolutely crazy. I, I mean, I can't believe you pay $5.49. This would be like... I would think this would be a seven or eight dollar filter or something like that, but five dollars and forty nine cents is a standard price, which some people have said they got it cheaper. Three thousand mile filter. This is a three thousand. Oh. It looks like a champion filter. It's got the champion top holes. And then it's also got the champion side holes. And it also uses the champion type where the frame goes really deep down into the filter. How this is more shallow with these ridges right here. That's a champion stamping type design. And that's a champion type design. And then they use this leaf spring bypass assembly as well. A 2.5 liter Ford engine that you find in like the fusions. Uh, it just the engine is phenomenal. The escapes, they ran it all the way back to 2006 and previously. We have, we have customers that come in with the 2.5 liter fusion engines from like back in 2006 or whatever. They have 300,000 miles on these things, not leaking any oil at all. The only thing that engine ever really did was it leaked. The front cover would leak and you'd reseal it. You'd get another 100,000 miles out of it before you have to reseal the front cover again. Or the valve covers would leak. They don't come in misfiring. They don't come in consuming oil. Uh, I ran one for a week. It was a, it was a really rare, what they call a unicorn version. Um, 2006. Fusion, 2.5 liter, 5 speed, in a family size sedan, a 2.5 liter 5 speed, that sucker moved pretty good. I beat the living hell out of that car for a week straight. 
and it took every bit of it and asked for more. It had no problem down the interstate, 80 mile an hour, like it was nothing. That car was a great car, a phenomenal car. And that's why I love the 2.5 liter in the Escape versus the 2.0 EcoBoost or the 1.5 EcoBoost. But riddle me this. Let's talk about how screwed up this is. Why would a manufacturer, specifically, let's just let's call it like it is, Ford, take a titanium line I, and their higher end lines and offer only a 1.5 liter, a 1.6 liter, or a 2.0 liter EcoBoost, but make people buy a more basic design for the 2.5 liter NA? Why is that not an option for somebody to go get a titanium or higher end Escape with a 2.5 liter NA engine, but still get all the other features. It's not right for them to do that. Some people don't want the turbo stuff. Some people don't want the higher horsepower stuff, but they'd rather have a 2.5 liter NA engine with the titanium package. But you cannot order that vehicle that way. Anyway, I got to give it to Super Tech on their 20,000 mile filter. Phenomenal filter. This is outstanding. They use like the man, the man in Hamel or whatever insert core, the plastic core. But love the love the design of that, the twenty thousand mile uh, filter from SuperTech, knock out of the park filter. I, the ten thousand mile filter, I would not do that. I'd pay the extra two bucks to get the twenty thousand, and you're basically getting getting a high end OEM style filter. Um, somebody asked about the Quicksilver. So let's do that. A lot of oil flow holes. 2015 2-liter EcoBoost. Have you seen many carbon issues? I haven't seen a lot of carbon issues, but when I pull apart the EcoBoost engines, the intake valves are completely covered. They're caked. At 40,000 miles, they look like they got 400,000 miles on them. So, yeah, they're... Let's not say anything more about that. The exhaust cutouts sounds cool, but sometimes it could actually be a, an issue because... If the vehicle doesn't have enough back pressure, if you're not running like a, a 800 horse, 1,000 horsepower engine, what is the purpose of an exhaust cutout? And most of the time, even at that, um, unless you're over like 13, 1400, like some of the higher end, like uh, import guys are like the Supras and stuff like that, there is, they, a lot of them won't even run uh, cutouts until they start getting up there to that power. A lot of like the serious muscle car racers, like the American guys, they won't even run in cutouts that because they need a certain amount of back pressure uh, balancing everything out. And I just, I don't mind cutouts. I think there's a purpose for them when you get into higher end where you need the flow right away. But I don't like cutouts. I did do uh, the Mopar SRT filter right here, and it was a badass filter. I mean, do what you want. I mean, I thought about it just for like, if I go to a car show or something like that, and you know, a lot of guys are, how they like to do different modifications or something. Sure, like a, for a parking lot use or something. But for performance, I don't see a lot of benefit in it. It's actually, zero benefit in it. Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is that Quicksilver boat oil filter. Okay, so I only see three, maybe four threads, and then the thread mounting area is super, super, super thin compared to all the other filters. A lot of inlet holes, though. 
Really nice anti-feedback diaphragm for sure. A lot of pleats inside this filter. Metal top cap, metal bottom cap. Instead of using a uh, steel pleat crimp, it uses just glue between the pleats, which is not a big deal. It uses more of like a, a man type center core or champion type center core. I don't know if you're not champion. Um, who makes uh, like Royal Purples filters? They use that plastic center core like that. And I think man uses the plastic center core like that. But other than that, it's got a metal end, a metal top. Good filter. A lot of filtering media here. I like how uniform it is and they didn't go, ex they didn't go stupid crazy with the glue. But it does look like they have that higher end, like Ford type resin. You can't see it there, but you can right there a little bit. You can actually look up underneath this lip right here, and you can see the the Ford Racing Pure Leader uh, and some of the other high end filters use this like tannish colored resin. It's super strong. I've cut open one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, I think between like 11 and maybe like 12 and 15 filters, something like that. My Ford, oh, Super Chat, there we go, Jason. My Ford 542 valve, 105,000 miles after. After about every 1,000 miles, half a quart of oil just disappears. No leaks anywhere instead of running 520. I'm trying to read the... Instead of running 520, should I run on heavy oil? I mean, you, you can actually... Um, I've seen a lot of guys mitigate some of this with that Lucas oil stabilizer. And like on the five liter coyotes, once they start getting up to about 150, 160,000 miles, you'll, same with the five fours too, they, they do about the same, the same thing. I mean, I kid you not. Um, once you start getting, you know, 100 and, I don't know, 130, 140, 150,000 miles, you'll notice a little bit more oil consumption. Sometimes it happens sooner depending, depending on who owned the vehicle before you and how they took care of it. And what a lot of guys do is they'll actually mix in part of their oil their oil they'll run factory oil but then they'll add some of that lucas oil stabilizer in it and almost all that goes away the low end knock the, the oil pressure issues and stuff almost all of it goes away because the only way to mitigate that is by rebuilding the engine and a lot of guys don't want to do that they'd rather just actually add something to it to get more life out of it and you probably still run it for another hundred thousand miles by adding lucas oil stabilizer at like every oil change it'll actually stabilize that and bring some of that pressure up more and actually take care of some of that uh, oil burning and you might go from like uh, half a quart every thousand miles to maybe like a quarter of a quart or half of a half of a quart or something like that and yeah or a quarter of a quart or half of that um, I've seen guys run that Lucas oil stabilizer just for the purpose of that and it ends up working out phenomenal for them but it's just on what you want to do but going to a thicker oil in a situation like that Definitely has helped a lot of people with oil consumption and low-end uh, motor noise. Now, a lot of guys think that that's, uh, that's just a Band-Aid. Well, it is. But it's a Band-Aid that's going to keep $6,000 in my pocket from having to go pay somebody to rebuild my motor. They're laboring the parts. Or, or even more. So yeah, it might be a Band-Aid, but it's a Band-Aid that works. It's a Band-Aid that's going to keep money in my pocket instead of putting it in somebody else's pocket. So to be honest with you, going to a thicker oil or adding a stabilizer to the oil when you do your services could actually help that. And a lot of times it does help that. Also, um, I, I started running a, yeah, I had a bunch of 302s and you're right. They did have low end noise and they're, they're notorious for that. Um, and again, just like somebody, some other people mentioned as well, the PCV system on those is critical to, to make sure the PCV system, there's nothing plugged. You've got a good functioning valve. There's no collapses in the lines. Um, I've even seen guys take EPR, 
like full bore like run a three hundred dollar kit of bg's engine dynamic system cleaner or just maybe a few of their single use if you go on amazon and look up epr and moa moa and epr 44k it's a fuel additive and an oil additive and they've run that system through a couple times and by the second or third time through it just quits it's not it, that that epr from bg cleans so much out of the engine and stuff like that it really starts After oil pump, are you talking about like melling? Since melling makes a higher volume oil pump than the factory one does, it does help some of that. I would agree to, to an extent that does help if that's what you're talking about, if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, see, I don't have, on my 2006 46, I, I don't have any oil consumption issues at all. And every time I pull the PCV tubes and stuff, they're always dry. But that also comes from me being anal about stuff. You guys know that I, I flush the shit out of that thing every, like, every month, every other month. It could. I think it actually could, uh, Chris. It's possible. Somebody said something about the Quicksilver. I'm not sure what that was. I missed it as everybody was talking. What is your option or opinion of Mystery Marvel Oil and gas and oil treatment? James, I have a whole series on Mystery Marvel Oil. I love that stuff. I swear by it. And I'll do it until the day I die. I absolutely changed my mind. You know, I was one of the guys saying, oh, that's just snake oil until... Somebody said, you know what, let's all stop talking about it and beating up the product, do a full series on it. And I was like, you know what, let's roll, baby. I got the perfect vehicle for it. And every time I changed the oil, it was pulling more junk, more junk, more junk, more junk, and making it quieter and quieter and quieter. So Marvel Mystery Oil is no joke. It's a product that works. Oh, I'm not done yet. I didn't. Um, the Quicksilver bypass valve, pretty strong, pretty strong bypass valve. The can, it's actually a decent can as well. The end is, it's pretty heavily weighted. It's thin, but overall, I think it's a good filter. Doesn't look like there's anything cheap about this filter at all. Can you open the Subaru? I know you did the WRs. Do I have one here? Is this it right here? Is this the one? Let me see. One AA160. I'll open it right now. Made in Japan. Looks like it's got a it's got a greased, lightly greased ring right out of the pack. Honda V6 filter. I thought they were pretty much all on every vehicle. Uh, when I looked online, they were saying that they use the four cylinder. A lot of the four cylinder filters are all the way from like the one point whatever liters all the way up to the three point whatever V6. They use them all interchangeable. I mean, I'm not saying that that's necessarily true, but the chart that I was looking at was saying that the four cylinders and six cylinders are almost all always the same exact filter. That's why I opened that little Fram Ultra filter. I like that Fram Ultra filter for Hondas. I think you can. Somebody, 
somebody at the dealership, it was a parts manager or somebody said, we've had guys come in and take this filter off and swap it over to a FL1A. And I think it was a 400 or something like that. But I also like the Denzel and the Molly for, for the Honda stuff as well. So I really can't pick. They're all good. I like how this, the Subaru filters are like the only ones that ever come out this clean and like tucked into the cap and they don't ever come off with anything else. They're just nice, just planted. Big oil flow holes, really big. Like big like the Fram, like that little Fram one that I pulled out that would match the Hondas. Really thick threads as well, like twice the thickness of most uh, standard thin wall. And I see one, two, three, four threads, but these threads are really wide threads. They're not thin threads. They're actually really wide. Like they really, it looks like they really grip the hell out of whatever they go on to. Again, you know, knock out of the park filter, just phenomenal filter. I love the fact that they, they put all the filtering capability into these filters that they do. It's just pleat upon pleat upon pleat. And I like how they use that middle stamping to actually g grab the pleats and pull them together. And then if you look in the end cap and the top cap, it's full of resin all the way to the actual filter itself. They don't skimp out there at all. That's something that they just do not do. And then it's got a Uh, Car Wizard, I like Car Wizard. I don't go to other people's channels just because I don't ever want anybody to think that I take their ideas. It's not something that I do. If somebody asks me to look at something, I always make an attempt to look at it. But I typically don't ever finish watching something. I ask somebody, if you want me to go to another video, you give me a, a link and you tell me a timestamp that you want me to pay attention to. I won't sit and watch the whole video. I like Car Wizard. Car Wizard's the kind of guy that's humble, he's calm, he doesn't act like he knows everything. He will ask other people for help. He doesn't claim to be the, the, the most knowledgeable person out there, but he'll get the job done. I think he's a very, very good guy. And he's a good technician. He's a, a good model of what a technician should be because he doesn't want to, um, he, he doesn't claim to be the most knowledgeable person out there, but he, what, he, what he will do is he will find out the problem. He doesn't, he's not scared to pick up the phone and reach out to somebody and say, hey, I need a little help. Can you help me do this? I know you're the profession at you know, Ford or GM or whatever. I'm having a little issue. He's very humble about that. So I, I like that about him. So I think he's a good dude. Scotty, on the other hand, um, at one point I had nice things to say about Scotty, but the more Scotty grew up on YouTube and Scotty grew up uh, learning social media, the more it blew up his head and the more he really started letting, letting things go to his head. Uh, a lot of times Scotty's full of shit. Most of the videos that I watch, Scotty is completely full of shit. Um, he will talk about a product and give it all the credit and praise in the world, but then turn around and bash another product that runs the same damn transmission and motor in the product that he was praising. It's just a different name on it. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Did he just like take a line of blow or something before he started this video? Or did he, did, did, I, did a, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know what the hell's wrong with him. Uh, he he flip-flops back and forth. Uh, one minute he's praising Ford, but then he's bashing Ford for something else. The next minute he's quitting, and then he's leaving. And the next minute he's done, and this manufacturer almost shut him down. The guy's channel is nothing but entertainment for people that like Grandpa Scotty. That's him. What I do like about Scotty is Scotty's good at narrating videos. He's got a very nice narrating voice for like the history of Ford or the history of GM, or the history of this type of automotive, uh, you know, design or something like that. I like the fact that he does that, but Scotty doesn't have anything else to put out anymore. If you notice, he's always reaching. He's always reaching for the stars, or he's always reaching to 
to grasp for ideas on videos and stuff, but he just doesn't have it in him anymore. He's not a technician. He doesn't fix cars anymore. And if he does, it's all basic maintenance stuff, which I'm not bashing the guy for that. It's just like clickbait video after clickbait video after clickbait video. And he's always chasing the money. It's about the money for him now. It's not about his subscribers. It's not about helping people and answering questions and stuff. He's answered the same type of redundant question over and over and over again. So the answer is already there. He doesn't even have to think on how to answer something. He just, he's been doing it for so long and been practicing for so long that it's just, oh, there it is. Check your fluid. Do your flush. Check your fluid. Do your flush. Toyota's the best. Ford sucks. Toyota's the best. GM sucks. It's the same automated answer over and over again. You wanted it. I gave it to you. There's my answer. So back to the Subaru filter. Uh, you know, it, I won't well, backtrack one more time. Rewind. Um, Scotty started talking about Ford transmissions. And here I am dealing with this type of stuff every single day, listening to the man talk about a product that I work on, that I, I profess in, that I went to school on, that I have hundreds of certifications in, sit in umpte umpteen hours of just over and over, hundreds of hours learning these products. And I'm listening about another man that's never worked on the damn product in his life. Tell me how. The product runs and why it fails. And I'm thinking to myself, when are we going to start talking about the truth of any of this topic? Because I didn't hear any of what you just said as the truth. You know nothing about what you're talking about. You read some blasphemy on some kind of National Highway Safety site somewhere that talked about a recall and all of a sudden drew up something about why Ford's going to fail. He posted a video not too long ago talking about why Ford factories are shutting down completely, why they're done, why Ford won't be in the business anymore or something like that. And I posted immediately to his channel. It got deleted, but I posted immediately to his channel right away. Is it this clickbait guy again? Do you honestly think that Ford's going to shut down every single facility that they have and just go out of business? They're still one of the top-selling companies on the market right now. Scotty, that makes no sense what you just said, and you're reaching for more money again, blowing smoke up more people's backsides. And I sent it. I left it on his page. A couple minutes later, I go back. Gone. Deleted. I made sure that I didn't swear in anything so it wasn't picked up by an algorithm or by a security check, and it got deleted. This, the stuff that he puts out is unreal. I'm surprised that he hasn't been pulled off the internet for lying so much. It's unreal. And now I'm done. And we go back to the Subaru filter. This is an impressive filter. This is a very, very, very impressive filter. I don't have to say anything else about this filter. Um, it's, the, it's this Tokyo Roki company, OTD, uh, made out of Japan. They probably one of the best filters that I've ever looked at factory wise. This is just a good, very good, very high quality knock out of the park filter. And I just love these black Subaru filters. They're some of the best quality I've seen. They're really good. They're really nice filters. Um, you guys want to do that eco guard or you want to go to some of these gold AC Delcos? What is the best overall filter? Honestly, uh, the best overall safest filter is going to be your OEM filter. You know, the speaking of the the quality though, not an STP filter, not the cheap AC Delco filters. The best overall filter for your vehicle is get the safest bet is going to be an OEM filter. But if you're going to pay a little bit of money. I like a Purolator Boss. I like a Wix XP. I like a Napa Platinum. I like a Fram Ultra, Fram Titanium. Um, any of the Molly filters, the Denzel filters, uh, the Hanks filters. Um, what am I thinking? Man? Man, M A N N, own, Man and Hamill own like most of these filters that we see on the market. Um, I love the man filters. Just their standard basic filter already comes with that nanotechnology. Yeah. So man I love the man the man filter is probably the one of the nicest filters I've seen. I just don't like the plastic core. Um 
So, you know, I would probably say if, if I had to choose, it would be me personally right now. I'm stuck on pure later boss and Fram. I like the Fram ultra synthetic and the Fram titanium. They're my best ones. All right. So what do we do now? You want to let you want to rip open that eco guard that $6 filter or whatever it is off Amazon that feels freaking heavy compared to all the other filters or do you want to open up like an ultra guard gold or something from ac delco or should actually wait 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 we have this here you want to open the volkswagen one up so we can see that it is a man filter or this is pretty heavy or do you want to do the eagle guard okay eco guard let's do it and I'm surprised they send it sealed up with this cap and stuff on it. This is a heavy, heavy filter. Like, if you look at the threads in this thing, without even, let's not even cut into it yet. Holy shit. One, two, three, four, five, six threads right off the bat. And it already looks like it has a silicone type anti feedback diaphragm. This is a heavy filter. Yeah, that's what I meant. Drain back. Anti-feedback drain back. I have a habit of saying that. Some people can't get past it. Some people get butt hurt by it. One guy I kept, one guy got into an argument with me and literally tried having a long conversation of arguing and correcting me about the anti-feedback diaphragm. And I was like, dude, I ain't got time for this. I have flaws. I call things things that they're not. Let's just go, man. Who, who's got time to argue about stuff? Okay, first of all, strong filter. Holy moly. You can look and see. You can barely pick it up. But this is like twice the thickness of a standard like OEM. This is a nice filter. And that's why it's so heavy. That plate is huge on this thing. And it's got a lot of contact area for the threads. That is a nice filter. It's got this big, like, wick-style spring in the bottom of it. And then, it looks like it's, I don't know, but it, it, this actually looks like a type of wicks filter. This is a nice filter. Very nice filter. A lot of pleats, a lot of filtering media here. I think I paid like, I don't know if it was like four sixty or five bucks or something, or it was, this was a really cheap filter. That's a nice, and it, this has like the Dodge style rubber. No, it's not rubber. It's a hard plastic one, but it's got that same bypass valve in it. But except, except it's not rubber, it's, it's plastic. It's hard plastic in the bottom of it. That's a nice filter. I would buy that filter. It kind of looks like a Wix design, doesn't it? What oil filter combo would you recommend for a 2003 F-150, 200,000 miles, Amsoil, and Motocraft? On a, on a vehicle like that, I'd be changing the oil every 3,000 miles anyway with, with as many miles on it. I would pick the Motocraft one. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard people are telling me that that bypass valve on the um, on the Subaru one is really high. That's a nice filter, guys. 
It's called the Eco Guard Synthetic. That is a hell of a filter right there. That's a very nice filter. So don't sleep on that filter. That's that's nice. Strong. And that's the anti-drain back valve. It's like some kind of silicone type material. Very slick, very, very, very strong. Probably the, actually probably the strongest one out of the group that I've felt so far. Man, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of flex to it, but it really wants to stay up there in the spot. Let me see, let me check the Mopar one. Yeah, it's not as strong as that one. It's not as strong as that one. So that's probably the strongest one I've, I've felt so far. It's really thick. It's got a really nice base to it. That's nice. That EcoPath or EcoGuard. I might order one of these just to do a, just put a thousand miles on it and see what it looks like, or go a full oil change cycle for this. I like this filter. It's a very good filter. What's up, man? All right, do we go into the AC Delco filters now? I do have another Mopar filter here as well. Um, all I have is AC Delco, Mopar, another Mazda, and then a Volkswagen. And then we have this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get this thing open. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i probably wait till next week to open this thing up and see what this Vol Volkswagen filter is like. This is probably actually the strongest filter out of all of these. Just because it's a self-contained unit. Volkswagen? Okay. So this is a man filter, made in Germany, very strong, it uses a type of glass matting nanotechnology type pleating, and on the back side of it they run a fiberglass mesh along the back side of the pleating. You may have to ask the same question more than once if you want it answered because stuff rolls by so quick in the middle of me doing it, sometimes I don't see what you guys are asking. It's a nice filter. This was the most expensive one on Amazon. And it said it was a billet, ball bearing, or a needle bearing type. And it said you can move this, you could change this, pull the pin out, and you could change your cutter. And then put your pin back in. It was like $74 for this thing. got five threads in the cap it doesn't have a thin uh, core center but it's not thick either like some of the other ones well I wanted something that was gonna last so you know I paid them extra money for it that anti drain back valve for them almost feels like a specific pleasure material it's weird it does not, it feels, uh, just, I sit here and just touch this thing and it's like, mm. <laughs> it's, it's weird the material that they use on this man, this Volkswagen filter. Volkswagen filter, the filter that turns you on. It's weird. It's really slick. It's very soft. It's, I can't explain this material. It's, it's just a, looks like a very, very high quality material. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to go any further. 
And then here's that. Their filter. This filter feels different than the other glass mat type stuff. This filter that they have here feels different than Amsoil. It feels different than, than Fram and Wix and Napa. It doesn't feel like any of them. It feels different than VP Racing. This filter material is so slick to the touch. You can't feel hairs or burrs or anything like that. This type of material is very like a it's it's a glassy type surface to it. It it doesn't catch. It's not a rough surface. Let me see if I can cut it. And the man filters typically the way so man and purolator boss. So the man filters and the purolator boss filters, because because they don't use the metal ribbing behind it, they're able to put more filtering pleats inside the filter because that metal doesn't take up so much space. No, it's just like some kind of. It's the way the metal is oxidized or whatever or pressed no there's it's there's no paint on it it makes a loud crunching noise when you're trying to cut through it Man, this stuff is strong. Hmm. Try not to cut myself. Thank you. Look at that screen. Oh, it's in the filter. Feel that. Doesn't that feel soft? It kind of like slick. Yeah, the top but the bottom feels rough. The bottom is a little rougher. But look what they do. They run that through. It's in the filter. It's not by itself. It's actually in the filter. It's glued in with the media. And it's so soft. And it's like all, it's all glass mat. You can actually see the glass, the fiberglass all woven through this, like some kind of hybrid type material. And if you look, you can pull the, like the strands of fiber. Here, let me see if I can do this. If, if you pull if you pull on it you get like a hybrid type deal you can see some fiberglass but then you could see hairs as well like it's like a like it's a like it's a woven glass mat but yet at the same time almost like a wool or something dude that stuff is strong and it's layers it's like prep layers upon layers on top of one another that, that's a badass filter. But that's how the Purolator Boss is set up as well. 
that's how the pure later boss is just like this with the same type of material on the back that's why i like the pure later boss that's a badass filter yes i have i cut open a fram racing filter if you look back in my videos i think it's under the little videos but if you just actually go to my library and type on a little hourglass and uh type in uh like fram racing you'll actually see it's the strongest racing filter that i've touched so far the can is like three or four times the thickness of any other can i've touched the bypass valve on the bottom has an extra screen uh the filtering media and stuff like that is it's adequate there's plenty of it in there it's a very very strong filter Hello, San Francisco. The filter is for a 1.4 Volkswagen specs. Let me see here. Five forty-year-old oil, 10k OCIs, and the oil capacity is 4.4 quarts. I mean, it's awesome, man. That's a badass filter. I really like that filter, and here's another reason why I like Man and Pure Later Boss the best. They're the only company that I've seen so far that uses this like yellowish white type of resin that seems to be very, very, very strong, almost like most racing guys. So the filter doesn't come apart inside the vehicle while they're racing. Um, it, it has most of this type of resin in the, in the actual oil filter housing itself. So it's like purely the Pure Later Boss filter and the base man filters like this seem to be way ahead of uh, technology when it comes to that type of uh, resin and the way it's anchored into the end caps more than anybody else. Mm. My God. Look at the length of that spring. Holy crap. That's strong. That's that's one of the strongest bypass. I don't know what the bypass is supposed to be on that motor that you just said, Joseph. But that feels like a strong ass bypass in there. Like it's really strong. And they use it's it's some kind of like like some kind of special plastic or something. I almost don't even want to push on it with this knife because I'm afraid that I'm going to... But that's a strong spring. Golly. That's really strong. It's hard to push that in. What did you? What car did you say that was for again? Joseph knew which one it was for. So one of the 1.4 liter turbo Volkswagen specs, 5W40 Euro oil, 10K OCIs, and the oil capacity is 4.4 quarts. So that's what this filter is for. This is a strong filter. Very strong filter. Here's a, let, let, let me give you a better view of what this, how many pleats are in this thing and how it's glued in. That's impressive to have this type of media and that many pleats in one filter glued in like this and be this uniform and clean. That's impressive. That's a hell of a filter. That's the best filter that we've opened up today. Now, I have one Mazda filter left, and then the rest are AC Dopo filters. Let's you let's at least do one of the AC Dopo Ultra Golds or something. I haven't seen one of those yet. And then there's some GMs that have Chinese stamping on it. So here, this filter is heavy. This is a AC Dopo. Ultra Guard Gold. So let's, I'm going to open this one up. I don't know what filter, I know there's, I'm not sure what this is for. It's a UPF 48R.
Wow. Uh, <laughs> the threads? Look at the threads on this thing. Those are some thick threads. Really thick. And look at the amount of threads that's in the top of this. One, two, three, four, five, six threads in the top of this can. That is crazy. To go from what we looked at, you know, a couple months ago, the standard AC Delco, to this, is night and day. So just standard type leaf spring, but again, they're using that ripple type design in the creases and the stamping. I know some of it has to do with the stamping, but that's actually a pretty, it's a strong bypass. Not super strong, but that's pretty strong compared to some of the ones that I've pushed open. This must be for some kind of like more performance type application. Yeah, they're always playing, they're always barking, so... Uh, I'm not very impressed with this. This is very chintzy, very flimsy. But again, it's just to be... Wow, that's the worst one I've opened up so far. It just folds over on itself and it doesn't even really want to return. That's really cheap. Yeah, that's really cheap. A lot of pleats. A lot of pleats in this thing. That's a nice filter. It's a thick filter. So freaking hard to cut through this stuff. Pretty standard type filter. I think it's a good filter. I think the Ultra Guard is a good filter. But what shocks me is the fact that it's not better than what it is. And I know that the can is very strong. Their, their can on their Ultra Guard is stronger than Ford's can, for sure. Ford's can is a lot thinner than this. But the way the Ford Motorcraft filter is built inside, it's a lot more superior to this filter. All the internals of the Ford with this can here, I would end up choosing that setup. But the fact that this can is as thick as it is, and they increased or they made it, they added the top metal and bottom cap. Um, I'm surprised that nothing else was like this is. That's bad. When you just fold it over like that, and it, it almost wants to say stay. I don't know if it's just old, or that's just really cheap rubber. But overall, it's a good filter. It's a great filter. I, I like the filter. I think that they stepped it up big time with the quality of that filter compared to the last one that I, that I cut open. I mean, the last one that I cut open was trash. That is a nice filter. Uh, not the best of what I've seen from OEM quality, but uh, definitely a nice filter. This is just a standard blue can AC Delco. It's got the champion type top inlet and outlet. Probably going to be more like a, like a champion or Fram type center core. PF46E. And this was a UPF 48R, the one we just did.
Yeah. It's a better design than the, the standard frame. It's a champion type design. One, two, three, four, five. Five threads, a lot of uh, oil flow holes, really big. It looks like a, see that's nice. It's got a lot of strength to it. It's got a lot of strength to that anti-feedback diaphragm. That is a strong anti-feedback, or a drain back valve, anti-feedback diaphragm, uh, drain back valve. <laughs> Hey, knock it off. Don't come over here pouting. Knock it off. Leave her alone. Good boy. Anti-feedback. And then the internals. They're cheap. Uh, am I missing something here? Is this not... This one don't take a bypass valve? Is this like the bypass valve that... I guess this one don't take a bypass valve. I don't know. It's a really, it's a standard thin can. Um, it uses a, like a cotton type or fabric type end on it. A lot of filtering media. So this is stronger than the Fram type design I've seen before for sure. It's actually not a bad filter. It's a little cheaply made, but I wouldn't hesitate to, to run it if I wanted just an OEM filter. There's probably more filtering media pleats in this than most standard filters because of how thin they are. But at the same time, this would be for a low OCI filter. And there's no bypass valve in it at all. I don't know. Maybe Maybe I'm just not... Maybe this is another one of those designs. Maybe this is another one of those designs where the bypass or the, the anti-feedback is built into the filter housing. Maybe one of the GM guys can, can enlighten me on that. Why this PF46E doesn't have a bypass valve in it. It's not even, it's not in the can at all. Nothing. There's nothing here. This is all that came out of it. I'm not sure what happened with that one, but maybe that's maybe that's a design that it doesn't go in like the the Cummins ones. Remember how I made that mistake because I didn't understand that the bypass valve was in the Cummins, was the oil pump or the filter adapter housing. It doesn't actually need to be in the filter, but Ford does run it in the filter, not in the housing. Uh, I see. I would think that you would want it there anyway, but... Who am I? This is a uh, Chinese stamped. It says genuine... OE, but on the top of these boxes, there's Chinese stamping on it. So I'm not sure why these specific filters have the Chinese stamping on it and the other ones don't. But right on the top, maybe it's for the GM market in China. But right on the top, there, top there's uh, Chinese stamping. And the oil filter rings are twice the thickness. This looks like it might go to a truck or something like that. I'm not sure.
Uh, Ford Bronco destroys the Jeep Wrangler by far. They've already done the testing. They already went out to the desert. Um, do they use microns to determine filter like air does? Yeah, yeah, it's, everything's based on off microns. You know, something like 80% uh, efficient at 25 microns or 99% efficient at 30 microns or something like that. Uh, the Bronco, when they took when they took the Jeep Wrangler and the Bronco out to the desert and tested both of them against each other, the Bronco was doing things the Jeep was taking four and five times to attempt to even do. It's the way the, the four-wheel drive is set up and the kind of power on demand and stuff that it makes and the way it controls everything. The Bronco has better technology built into it. And that's why they built the Bronco the way they, they did because they wanted to take over the market when it came to, like, the four-wheel drive type s like little suvs and stuff like that and the way the bronco is built it's much superior to the jeep wrangler now there's always going to be jeep fans but when you actually go online and look at the testing that was done by like big youtubers and other outfits and stuff that went out and took the bronco out and and just destroyed it the jeep by far outperformed the jeep wrangler are you guys fighting now too everybody wants to fight Oh my God, it's like today's the day for everybody fighting. Now the boy cat wants to follow around the girl cat and then just fight with her. One, two, three, four. So five threads on this. It's got the big champion type holes, top. Again, pretty beefy drain back valve. A lot of pleats in this filter. <laughs> There's a ton of pleats in this filter. So a lot of filtering going on here. A lot. And this filter, the regular filter, is set up like the gold. The Ultra Guard Gold. It's got like the same type end caps. The really nice ton of filtering media. It's got bypass valve. Got the really nice the five to six count thread end. And this is just a standard AC Doco filter. It's just got Chinese stamping on it. It doesn't say it's a gold or anything. It's a standard one. It's really nice. Actually, really nice. And Nice can, not too flimsy. It's actually fighting me a little bit, resisting. Who the hell is this? Web? Somebody blocked this guy. I need another moderator. Hide user from the channel. I just did. I put a uh, hide user from channel. But I can't figure out, like, now I'm touching the screen. Report. Okay, so put user in timeout off. I hid the user from the channel. And I'm going to put report. And then unwanted content or spam or pornography, sexually explicit material. Done. Bye-bye, dude. Never on YouTube again. <clears throat> But that's a good filter. <clears throat> I think I might may have inhaled a little fiberglass or something. All right, so. No, I, don't, I didn't order a filter from them. I mean, I, I went to, somebody sent me a link for an oil filter, and they were really good, they look like really good, high-quality oil filters. But when I went there, it gave you all of the applications, but there was no ordering spot. It was to tell you what filter to order, but you couldn't order directly from the website, and I don't know what it was. It gave you applications, but you couldn't order from them. Um... Let's look at, I got another Mopar filter here. Let's mix it up a little bit. 
This Mopar filter is an MO339. MO339. I don't know what's up with these Mopar filters, but they got huge diaphragms on the bottom of them. Here this guy goes again after I done deleted him once. Well, I banned him from the channel again, and then I, uh, I don't know what it is about these Mopar filters, but when I cut them open, something inside causes it to create these rippling effects around the outside. Only the Mopar filters. Oh my god, this guy again. Nate, here, I'm going to make you a moderator. Now you're a moderator, Nate. Now you can get rid of him if he comes back. It's... I don't know. I hit, I push hide user from channel, and then I go back and click on their name, and I put report person for sexually explicit content or uh, something pornography, trying hoping that YouTube will pull them off the channel, and they don't. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, I don't know, three or four threads. There's not a lot of threads on this filter. Yeah, but you can't do it while you're on. you got to be off of the page. Wow. Look at these these pleats and this Mopar filter. They're thick. They're really thick the way they're packed in there like that. Very, very thick. This is a, this is set up just like a Purolator filter. What the hell is this guy doing? He's back again. Oh, this filter is strong, man. I can't even get this damn thing out of here. God. Mm. About freaking time.
it's standard it's standard style uh, pleating that we normally use, but it looks pretty strong. This is strong, man. There's a lot of pleats in this. The Mopar filters are, like I said before, Toyota, Mopar, Mazda, and Ford have phenomenal filters. Wix and Purolator make it, make them all, but they're all owned by Man and Hamill. So that's why Man, their base filters, better than any of the other filters. But it's just a great product. Another Mazda filter. So this Mazda filter is what threw me off. The Mazda filters I've seen are made by Purolator. Um... Well, the Toyota oil filters are the same as like multiple other manufacturers. It's not that they're like superior. There's like four or five manufacturers that all use the same type of manufacturing with their oil filter, and Toyota is one of them. So their their filters are great. And they're they're phenomenal filters, but they're, it's not like you know they're the most superior OEM filter out there because that's not the case. The most the most the most superior OEM filter on the market is a Ford filter. That's it's facts. Facts over feelings. So here is what I wanted to show you guys. What was the other one earlier? This is a Mazda filter. But this Mazda filter is actually made in Thailand. This is not the Purolator type design that Ford uses. Yes, it's lightly greased. The ones from Thailand or Japan or, or China end up coming with these lightly greased with the plastic on the end. And it's a Mazda filter. But most of the Mazda filters that I've opened up are actually not Mazda filters. They're like Purolator Ford type design. This is a really nice filter. But this is another one of those that's just going to have glue on the end of it. How many oil filters can you destroy for absolutely no reason? I'm not sure if you're being playful or if that's a serious thing. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, maybe Ford Mechanic, you could explain a little bit more. Dude, I love these filters. I don't know why. It's got that resin plastic ring on the end of it. I like the way it smells. It smells like uh, fresh rubber. Mmm. Smells good. It smells real good. There's a lot of pleats in this as well. These are thicker pleats than what we've seen with any of the other filters. I noticed on these filters where they only use glue right there in the end, they actually put thicker pleats in there.
This is strong. Uh, the other mods, the filter. Hey, guys. Can you give me a, a garbage bag? Because I need to filter some of this out here. Not beer. Yes. Yeah. Don't call me a garbage picker. Did you call me a garbage picker? Don't call me a garbage picker. Wood filter or the mod filter. Bingo, got it. Y'all better not call me a garbage picker. Okay, so this is one Mazda. That's the one Mazda filter we opened up. It's designed just like a Ford. It is that Purelator makes it, which Man and Hamill owns, right? Which and and then here's another version of the Mazda filter, but for a different vehicle probably. Which uh, what was it? Uh, one of the other manufacturers, like Nissan or somebody, does the same type of design. So there's two different types of Mazda filters here. And then there is bypass valve. Now, and then restart the Um, let's open these other GM filters just to see if they're the same. And if they are, we won't have to. I'll use them for something else. This is the same as a standard GM. It's got a metal top cap and metal bottom with a plastic core. This is a PF47E. What do you guys want to do? You want to cut the rest of these open? Or if they're the same, don't even worry about it. Because this is a, the same plastic core on the inside anybody interested in any specific GM filter right now I'll cut it open
PF 1233, PF 61E, PF 47E, 48R, 64, 64R, 26, Forty-eight, sixty-six, sixty-three. Are oh, twelve thirty-three. There it is, right there on the side. There it is, right there. How about we do this? We uh. We open up this last little GM, and then we attempt to open this up, which I don't think we're going to be able to. It's a lemon filter for a Volkswagen, and then we just jump off of here. We've been on here for three and a half hours. guys never see that's always hiding she just came out Stella my girl come here Stella oh wow a lot of inlet holes for the oil in this 1233. The thread area is kind of thin. It's really thin compared to the other ones if you look at it. It's adequate, but it's thin. It's like, but it's got one, two, three, four, maybe five threads. Most of them only, like I said before, they only have like three four if you're lucky but a couple today have had five and six threads to where it could actually make really good contact and you know like it has more if you had to thread it on more it has more area to grab into and what i always think about and i i know i shouldn't do this but what i always think about is i think back to when the spark plugs were blown out of the four sixes and five fours there wasn't enough threads machined into the heads nice filter honestly the 1233 it's got a ton of pleats in this thing It's got a big bypass valve for this little filter. This thing is big. What does this 1233 go on to? Somebody just asked me to open this up. What does it fit? I forget. I don't have the paper on me. This thing is huge. What she said, I know. A lot of filtering pleats in this little thing. 1.8 Toyota YZZF3. Yeah, this thing is it's actually pretty good quality it's got a nice steel cap top and bottom it's got that center core that uh royal purple uses and man uses the plastic core little small tiny thing the filter is not actually super flimsy either it's got some strength to it it's a little flimsy but it's not bad not a bad filter good filter UPF 63R? I think so. Yes, I do. Right here. This is one of those nice gold filters. These got those huge O rings on the bottom.
Uh, probably Denzo. So this is the UPF 63R. These U these UPF filters are re they really got a nice thick thread area and the heavy heavy end cap. I did we did a Toyota one. I'm not sure if it's the Toyota one we did earlier. It was a nice filter, but I don't remember exactly which one it was. Nine oh nine one five YZZ D three D one. So I did D three. You're asking for D one. I don't have a D one, but this the threads in these are nice. I, I think it's one of the best thread like contact areas I've seen. And it's, it's like a thicker type design around here where it ties into the mount. One two three four five six six threads in this one. Lots of uh, lots of filtering media in this filter. It's actually a good. It's a nice filter. It smells like brand new. Like this thing was just made. Like it's got a stronger like new. Holy crap! Look at the glue in that thing. The glue. Well, I, you can't see, but they don't skimp with the glue in this filter. They fill everything up between every single pleat all the way to the edge. It's all the way down inside there. Some of them skimp and you can see like little spots of metal surface and stuff, but none of these have any of that. I did an FL1A a couple nights back. Um, maybe it was last week or something. I did do one. I was most impressed with that filter because of how tall it was, the volume of oil that that filter could handle. And not only that, I thought because it was older, it would not have Purolator's bypass design like the, the new, newer Ford filters. It actually does. When you get an FL1A, it has the same style, superior upper bypass design in the top of the filter housing and it actually has a string wrapped around it that's glued to the pleats to add for that extra protection of keeping all those pleats in because it's so long that sucker it, it's a great filter so this filter is a really nice filter this is actually really, really good superior filter. This is a nice OEM design. Um, tough bypass valve. It's got some, it's got some tension to it, but not, not a lot. It's pretty tough. I want to try to open this filter. I don't think I'm going to be able to. You guys are going to see me look like a clown here. I don't already look like a clown, but still. Maybe if I flip it the other way. There's just so much going on inside this filter. I don't think I'll be able to get enough contact area. Maybe if I do it like this way.
Oh, it's starting to cut. Oh, I see filters, I see filters. Bingo. Nice uh, anti-drain back valve. Looks to be a really good quality. So I think it's some, for some kind of Volkswagen. I seen it on Amazon. I didn't know what it was for. And I was like, man, I've never seen a filter like that. I bet you they get a kick out of it. And this can, the can on this thing is just freaking massive. And it's strong, super, super strong. It's like really hard to even get it to... Try not to cut myself. For a Volkswagen, I think, is what it... And when you pull it apart, when you look right here in the top, where the holes are at, let me see. It looks like a man filter. I'm trying to get this on an angle where I can show you. It's got like the wrap-in style uh, top cap. The man filter is the only one that uses. That's on this filter. And if you look in the bottom, you can see the little fingers. At the edge of the hole right here, that part that I'm touching, man is the only filter I've seen do that. And it says it's a German quality filter, so it makes sense. This has got to be a man filter because it's like a, some kind of man type design. It's got a crap ton of pleats in it. I mean, this thing is just loaded with pleats. It's got so much glue in this thing that it's oozing out of the top. And the spring for this? This is weird because... I don't know, it's got like a double bypass or something. It's got a spring-loaded bypass or something, or I don't know if that's part of an anti-feedback type system, so the oil doesn't feed back. But then if you look at the bottom, it has a separate bypass valve in the bottom. So maybe that bypass is there and it bypasses there. Like this system really needs to be in bypass mode in order for it to bypass. What'd they say the eco guard was at 33 minutes? Somewhere around 33 minutes. And we're about to end this anyway, so we're, we're done here. Um, this was the last filter we were going to cut into.
know. <laughs> He's still watching the Eco Guard. Sorry, man. There's, today was, uh, there's a couple people that have been asking, when am I going to go live? When am I going to go live? And I figured if I'm going to open all these filters, I may as well have you guys here while I'm doing it. Um, but anyway, I'm surprised we even got this thing open. This is a massive, heavy filter. It's the strongest can out of all these filters. And it's got a double bypass setup. It's got a spring-loaded bypass here, but then in the bottom, as the oil's trying to get through that, it's got another bypass there, so I'm not sure. That's good. I'm glad that, I'm glad, it looked like a, a man design with that top cap like that. It's a hell of a filter. But my the most impressive filter so far was that, uh, what was the filter that we opened up? It was great, the, the other Volkswagen filter. The other Volkswagen filter that we opened up that was like the identical replica of the man, that was the best filter out of this whole group. That, that was the best filter. The most impressive filter out of this whole line, I would say, was the SRT filter and the EcoPath filter. This one here. Or the EcoGuard. I'm surprised this filter was as nice as it was. The SRT the the Volkswagen and this filter here were the three highlights of this video I expected this to be some just junk filter that they just call it synthetic and it, it was super nice very nice all right you guys want to call it that's it so we don't really have anything else other than uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight AC Delco filters is all we have left. Man makes the Napa filter for a lot of kids. I don't know. I, I don't know if... I know Wix makes Napa's filters, but I don't know if Napa has a specific contract with Man because that filter has to be made a certain way. The filter that goes to that, they contract them out for that one specific filter but Wix is the main manufacturer of the filters for Napa all right we'll have to figure out what we want to do with these other AC local filters So, guys, uh, again, a little disclaimer here. Uh, I'm not always right about everything, and my opinions are my opinions. I like doing this stuff. I like talking to you guys. I like being here and stuff like that. I like having this type of community together. Um, I am an emotional person. I'm, I'm an open person. I talk about a lot of things that I probably shouldn't talk about or nobody even cares about, but that's because I grew up not having a family, and I have a family now. That's my family and that's you guys. So that's one of the reasons why you see me being as emotional as I am or talking about things like I am because I'm real. I'm not here to hide things or suppress how I feel. I'm not here to, to be number one on the internet. I'm not even here uh, to claim like I, I, you know, I know it all because I don't. But one thing I do know is that, that I'm in this to win it. I want to build a community and a family with you guys and that's, that's where I want to go with this. I mean, Nate, uh, Vitaly, any of the people on here that have had me service your vehicles will let you know I'm the same way in real life as I am here. There's no different about nothing. Nothing changes. I don't have an internet ego, a keyboard warrior ego. I'm the same. That's just me. That's how I am. And um, this is all I have. I have my family and I have these people here. Uh, that's just it. You know, that's and, and I don't have time... Uh, I don't have time to play games with people and argue and stuff like that, so that's why you see me. Um, that's why you see me often calling people out, because not enough people say anything, and when you don't say anything, those people get away with it. They'll just go to somebody else and go to somebody else and go to somebody else. So I apologize when you see me do that, um, but that's that's how I am. That's who I am. My my boss at my work watches the channel. My general man manager watches this channel. Ford engineers and corporate employees watch this channel i am who i am and i just i speak my mind and that's just how it is thank you
Uh, thanks for sitting with me for the last three hours and 45 minutes and going through all this. We have a couple more filters to go through, but we'll find another video where we can use that type of stuff. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to jump off of here. Y'all have a blessed day and enjoy your weekend. Be safe. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section and we'll do this again soon. Thank you to everybody that gave the super chat donations. I did not expect that. I didn't. You don't have to do that here, but it is much appreciated. It does help paying for the stuff that I do uh, buy for this channel. So thank you. Y'all have a great weekend. You too, Nate. Thanks for being a moderator here. All the moderators that I pulled on today that volunteered and was willing to do it, thank you guys. I appreciate everything that you do. See you later, guys.